Apparently we're already here. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara. I'm Sharif, and as per usual, obviously, we're gonna wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream. We already have some of the OGs. We got Darwin, we got, uh, I think that's Ram Ram in there. Hello, world. TVD, Mateus Lane, the crazy stitch lady. We got Pitchbull, Rich Naples, Stefan, Stefan Gilbert, I believe Benton, Maxi, Pavel, Pedro, we got Mr. Long Shorts, Gatekeeper, we got Fat Figga, Levi H, The Piper, Vin Duong, Brian Rubin, all right, we got Ronaldo, we got Zay, we got Jose, we got a whole bunch of people, thank you very much guys for joining us today. Today is the first day of the accumulation and distribution lesson, very much requested by you guys in the chat. And why not start something new today, right? We're doing PowerPoints today for our uh, lesson, so you'll be able to follow along. Much easier to keep track of what the you know what we're talking about. Um, good morning, though, Adair. Before we start, how's your day this? Week? Good morning. How's your weekend? Oh, my weekend was good. My weekend was not super eventful. Uh, we were talking earlier, you know, normal amounts of of sleep to slight oversleep. Yes, ma'am. Seems to have been the theme of the day, restful weekend. But yeah, a little bit of a faux Monday or a FOMO Monday for me here, missing some movements on Meta. I, I decided to get out of this short right before it, uh, my point of entry would have hit. So now it would have been a dollar plus in the money. A little bit sad, but that's okay. Also, I was talking to you off camera about missing this Tesla flat bottom break. So really, you know what? I'm not gonna let the FOMO get me down. I'm gonna use faux motivation to get into a nice trade here and start the Monday off, right? What about you? I know you have some some lovely little beak waters there. Yeah, we took the NQ, uh, the MNQ long through the break of the IB high over here. We're waiting for that 18.050 break, jump front run it at 47 and I believe 75. We're looking for a move at least into 18.1. Looks like we're rejecting back down now into the mid 60s. The best print we were able to secure so far, an 82 print. So, you know, not the, the biggest trade, but we're gonna pack our patience to see if we can hold up at these levels. What I was telling Adair before we came off camera too, if we came in to the IB high at around 18.050 and held up there, I thought that that would be an interesting sign for the bulls holding that key level of resistance before taking it north support but we may not get that descent into the um, into that the the high range of the uh, the IB open so we'll wait and see we'll pack our patience to see if we get any greater moves to the upside a couple more outs on this bad boy and then it's going to be all over there but today guys we are talking about spotting the accumulation and distribution um, like a day trader right so this is you know imagine you're at a buffet Say again, Katina Man. Short arm 156. The Katina Man is now short arm 156. So if you're following along with the Katina Man, he's already six dollars on the money on uh, on that boy, bad boy. Just but, green on. And he just got <laughs> green on it. But he hey. Went short through 150, tried to get it to extend. Saw the top, and now we're holding the short. Yeah, he was trying to go through short 150, but then you you had that pop, and then he he's got the better of it so far. So keep your eye on the chat as the Katina Man is often putting his uh, new trades in there. But for, for today's lesson, guys, imagine you're at a buffet, all right? Do you see people piling the plate as high as they can with delicious, delicious food? That's essentially what accumulation is. Or are they really leaving their plates half-eaten at, uh, at the table? That's what distribution is. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. In day trading, it's the same principle. But instead of food, we're watching price and volume. That's all it really comes down to, to understand what the big players are up to. Let's get into that first uh, pop there. All right, we can go candlestick clues. All right, so some candlestick clues you're looking for. You're looking for bullish engulfing patterns, okay? This, is, this will help show you what is taking place with respect to, to accumulation and distribution. $10. $10 in the money now on arm, Katina man, shout out to him. So the bullish engulfing pattern, what we're really looking for here is a long green candle, which completely engulfs a small red candle. That'll indicate buyers are overwhelming sellers and potentially pushing prices higher. We're looking for something like this, really that simple, okay? A red candle completely engulfed by a green candle. It's showing you the bullish sentiment of traders. Our hammer candle also as well could be an indication of accumulation. We're talking about bullish accumulation here, not distribution quite yet. 
a hammer candle, a uh, hammer shaped candlestick forms at a key support level, and that's where we'll be looking for it with a small body, low, long lower shadow, and a short upper shadow. This suggests buying pressure despite the temporary dip, often again near a support level. And this is kind of the, the thing we're looking for right here usually a downtrend followed by that hammer candle, and then subsequent strength coming in after. Uh, you're also looking for a doji with a long lower shadow. So similar to a hammer candle, but not so much uh, the developed body. Uh, basically what we're looking for here, long lower shadow, indicating buying interest, overcoming selling pressure, despite the indecisiveness reflected in the small body. And this is what you'll be looking for, something like that. Uh, that you know, was preceded by a downtrend. And then you see even more bearishness there, but the buyers say, now you don't and they push you all the way back up, closing more near the high. These are all different patterns that can be signs of accumulation here, okay? There's just no one right answer. And the rising wedge, we've talked about this. How important was this when we continuous, continually see higher highs and higher lows showing buying pressure? So price trends upwards within a narrowing channel, suggesting accumulation before a potential breakout. Look in this particular instance for increasing volume within the wedge for confirmation. And we're looking for something akin to this over here. So continuously higher lows, higher highs, but the, the space between the upper trend line and the lower trend line gets narrower and narrower and narrower. And that's what you're looking for there with respect to bullish accumulation, Adara. Questions, yeah, so, comments? Yeah, no, I do actually. So I guess um, I'm assuming it's going to be like a stronger signal if we're seeing these on why a longer term patterns, right? So if you have a dragonfly oh, yeah. doji, which I know is a rare candle in general, but if you have that in a daily, then I think you're really going to be eye popping. Oh, yeah. You're going to be like, this might be an arm, this might be an SMCI, this might be a sign of wild accumulation, right? And I'm guessing also too, um, if we have confluence with these moments of accumulation um, with stuff like earnings, like what we see, oh, with yeah. arm, I'm guessing that that would be a stronger sign as well. 100%. Uh, and also, yeah, I, I guess I have one more question. Too. Yeah, go for so it. So in terms of the length of accumulation or distribution, do you think that also, and again, like obviously it's going to be different in each case, but yep. could it also uh, be stronger or weaker depending on what kind of catalyst we have and if there was a reason going into it? So like w there's maybe going to be more accumulation. Oh, yeah. We have a really I strong catalyst saying. or less. Remember what we were talking about last week with respect to gaps? We said, you know, gaps on earnings, especially if it's, it's accompanied by low volume, sometimes get filled. But gaps that are created by news catalysts that aren't filled are always typically very bullish because they present something that the analyst didn't factor in. Like, okay. so for if the analyst overshot or undershot on earnings, that could be reflected in the subsequent price action. But a brand new catalyst that was never factored in on news, specifically news, right? That presents you with a whole new variable set. So I think that that's awfully bullish uh, with respect to news. Maybe not as much as earnings, but yeah, great Thank question. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, all right guys, I'm still holding, I'm in the futures position, it's just not reflected right now. So let me just take a quick in and out trade here on ARM, uh, and then we'll just flatten that super quick. No, nope, I didn't fill. All right, well maybe ARM is not the best idea to be getting in and I, and a trade on right now. Let's just put Apple for a sec because it's the dead one on the day. And then we'll just go along super quick and then flatten that out. There we go. Um, yeah, so there we go. Now we have that position reflected. All right, let's talk a little bit about bearish distribution. Okay, not everything is bullish uh, for accumulation and distribution. There's a lot of bearishness as well um, that we can talk about. So in the first case, we're looking for an inverse engulfing candle or a bearish engulfing candle, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, what we're looking for is a long red candle that completely engulfs a small green candle, which in this particular instance signifies sellers overpowering buyers and potentially pulling, pushing the price lower. So this is kind of what we're looking for over here. So completely uh, contrary to the bullish inverse uh, engulfing candle, we'll be looking for a green candle to form subsequent uh, followed subsequent by a bigger red candle that engulfs the entire price action there, okay? Uh, we're also looking for a hanging man, a hanging man shaped candlestick that forms at resistance levels. And this will be a small body, a long upper shadow and a short lower shadow. That will show you that the bulls were, were told uh -uh by the bears and they pushed that bad boy all the way back down. That could be sign, that could be a sign of distribution. So, and it typically is preceded by an uptrend, then it's pushed right back down. That's another thing we could be uh, on the lookout for there. And then a doji with a long upper shadow, um, you know, 
indicates selling pressure, overcoming buying interest, despite the indecisiveness reflected in the small body. So we'll be looking for something like this. Okay, which again, preceded by an uptrend, and then you know it makes a new high, and then the bulls, the bears say, no, you don't. Push it down, and then look for another subsequent red candle to make a new low after that. And then a falling wedge as well. Price prices trend downwards within a narrowing channel. So the exact opposite of what we were talking about, a, a, a rising wedge. This suggests distribution before potential breakdown. Look for decreasing volume within the wedge confirmation. confirmation. So you'll be looking for a pattern very similar to this. And you'll also be looking for descending volume, right? So you'll wanna look at the, the volume bars on the bottom and to see whether they're increasing, decreasing, or staying the same questions or comments, Adara. Yeah, no, I think for one, I think it's cool how many different things candlesticks can tell you. So they can tell you things individually, but also if you look at it as a, a part of a wider search for, say, accumulation or distribution, I think that that's really interesting, and that's one of the main things I learned from this. Also, I want to note, and this yeah. could just be, um, this is just something my brain did, and in case anyone else's brain did this, I just wanted to put it out there. Um, I think it's interesting, too, because when I was first looking at the notes, I was like, oh, like accumulation, and it was the bullish example, and I was like, oh, hmm. what about bearish? It's because distribution is bearish, accumulation is bullish. Exactly. This might be just the thing that my brain did, but just in case there are other um, people who are like, yeah, it's like uh, accumulation is going to be bullish and then the bearish is the, the distribution. The distribution yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, no, you're bang on there. Should have made that probably a little bit clearer. No, it, it, uh, yeah, it was start. just me. I was just like, yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, all right, so volume, very important in the accu accumulation distribution analysis as well. So volume plays a crucial role in identifying accumulation and distribution patterns. It's like the secret language whispered uh, by the market revealing the true intentions behind price movements. Here's how to decipher its messages. So what we're looking for here is increasing volume with rising prices. Are they moving in tandem or are they moving conversely? So this often signifies accumulation when you have price increasing and volume increasing as well. Big players are entering the market, pushing prices up and driving volume higher. Think of it as a bidding war attracting more participants, okay? So that's what we're looking for there. Increasing volume with rising prices, another bullish accumulation uh, indica indicator. And then look for decreasing volume with falling prices. That will be a bearish distribution indicator. So this obviously suggests distribution. Sellers are unloading their shares, causing prices to, dro to drop, but decreasing interest reflects in lower volume. So you see both of those, the decreasing of interest and the selling of shares. Imagine a buffet losing its allure as the plates get empty. I don't know why the, all the food references today, given that I didn't eat for, maybe that's why. It's like bullying. Maybe that's why, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, and then uh, look for also sudden volume spikes. These can amplify the existing message. A spike accompanying uh, a price rise implies strong buying pressure, while conversely, a spike during a decline suggests aggressive selling. Be on the lookout for those indicators. Questions or comments are there. Yeah, I think, for one, I love that it's called volume whispers. And I think, too, that, that's why it's actually key, because it's when you have less volume in these moments, that's when it's going to be key. So I, I think I, as much as it's kind of, you know, fun, funky wording, I think volume whispers right. does tell you something. Because <laughs> if you have lower volume going in, if it's whispering, rather than shouting like say arm or a small cap gapper on right? a day to shine, that might be a sign to you, hey, this could be a sign of something bigger. We're accumulating, yes, we're leading up to something. And I think, so that I just enjoy the wording of that uh, beyond the fact that it's entertaining. I also think it's kind of telling you a secret message, right? which is why I just wanted to kind of comment on that. Yeah, that's I, interesting. I agree. Also the buffet metaphor is something I'd probably have to ponder on a little bit more to see if it makes sense. But I mean, you know, we're adding a little bit of color to the proceedings, <laughs> although it is unfortunate that it's doing that today. I think days, maybe I was but, just hungry and that's yeah. why there was a lot of uh, food metaphors uh, thrown in there. No, but seriously, guys, we're also, when you're, you're looking at volume, we also want to do volume comparisons, right? So compare the volume today to recent averages. I've been talking to you guys about that a lot so we can know if it's outsized or undersized volume. So higher than average volume on an uptick obviously strengthens the accumulation signal. Similarly, lower than average volume during a decline reinforces the distribution theory. So be on the lookout for that and compare volumes across different price levels, also very key. So observe if volume is increasing significantly at support levels, which you know signals potential buying, or resistance levels, which is also potential selling. Uh, 
as a general rule, I think you should always be looking at how something trades at key resistance and support to see what the dynamic is between buyers and sellers at that point. Remember the wick shimmy dance that we're talking about? That's essentially, you know, a different reflection of accumulation and distribution at key levels. We look at it, well, I personally look at it at the 100 point level. The Katina man, what is going on over there? The Katina man now is printing on ARM because it no, is. No, 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 it's ripping. It's ripping. Sorry, I'm completely uh, out of touch here. It, it, arm is at 162, guys. It's just things flying. What? Yeah, it's it's nuts. As I said, in 162 came back down to 161. So you know, guys, keep in mind that Arm only 10% of the float is trading right now. This is probably exact, really why we're squeezing like this. It's kind of like a, a short. Uh, it's like a, an artificial short float. Okay, it's a squeeze. Neil says I couldn't agree more. All right, so. Those uh, two things I just mentioned today are comparing volume to recent averages and comparing volume across different price levels. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I think the volume across different price levels is um, is really interesting, and it's not something I would have thought of. So basically, mm -hmm. you kind of use that to show if we have clear support or resistance or Dang. historical support yep. resistance. Okay, yeah, no, that, that's something I want to actually look back and, like, you know, trading view or Pro 8 and look and see if, if this actually is... is Relevant, because I think that'd be cool. Well, just think about like when we look at uh, a breakout, like when we looked at 18,000 last week. Remember how we were looking at 18,000 to see if the break of 18,000 was accompanied with stronger volume? Or was it like a low volume? Because we want to predict whether this was going to be a fake out breakout. And one of the ways we look to predict is, is it coming with the requisite amount of volume? And how do we know if it's requisite amount? Well, you're comparing it to the 17,000 breakout. I see. The 16,000 okay. breakout. So that, I, I think this makes eminent sense. Thank you. And I think NVIDIA would be a good example of that. I want to go, like, if you can kind of compare the NVIDIA, the 600 breakout and the 700 breakout. There you go. Or should we even be dancing your 750? Because I think the way we broke 500 was... Um, astonishing, mind-boggling, eye-opening. So I think, yeah, I think it's just one example, but I think, All right. yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Guys, BMR is at 1,000%. Okay, we just, broke, we just went to $23 on BMR. Oh, my goodness. I, I have nothing else to say other than, like, I mean, we got ARM at 40% and BMR at 1,000%. What a fantastic way it is to start the day. I know SMCI is pumping too, guys. The, uh, the what's it called? The chips are all the rave right now. Uh, thankfully, I have a lot of chips in my portfolio. That's a joke. I have none, right? So, you know, it's always great to watch this go by. And you always tell yourself, no, 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 we're too high. I can't buy in here. No, 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 no. And then it goes up another 10% and 20%. So, uh, tough. Uh, staying on the sidelines anyway, watching this kind of stuff. All right, let's move on to the next thing, uh, Ram Ram, if we can. The context canvas, guys. Remember, we're not trading in a vacuum here, all right? We have to trade in the context in which everything is appearing. So keep in mind, you need to be able to consider the news and events. Are there oh, bullish reports on up or upcoming catalysts that could attract buyers um, at this particular level? I mean, uh, is, there a, is there an earnings report coming up where analysts are overly bullish or the other way around? Keep that in mind. Support and resistance. Are we approaching a known support level on the daily, on the weekly, which is a possible potential buying zone or resistance uh, for a potential distribution opportunity? So keep your eye on key levels of support and resistance on the daily, on the weekly. And the market trend. I mean, look at what the NQ has been doing. Look what the ES has been doing. Uh, we're obviously on a very bullish trend as of late. And essentially, from the end of October, early November onwards, it's been up and to the right. So you need to know the content in which you're trading, even if you don't like the name and you feel it is a, it's, it's a sell, it could continue to ride uh, the bull wave just because the market is a trending. So keep your eye on context, very important there, Adara. And then confirmation is king. Um, you know, basically don't jump the gun, use other tools to confirm your suspicions about whether accumulation or distribution is taking place. Look at technical indicators. We talked to you guys about RSI. We talked to you about uh, on balance volume, um, moving average convergence divergence. You can help use these tools to gauge whether it's a buying or selling opportunity. And last but not least, you know, this is my favorite, Chart patterns, baby. Look for complementary chart patterns like head and shoulders patterns or triangles to gauge what the market direction is. Questions or comments to Dara? 
Yeah, no, I think too, one thing uh, actually to talk on with what we were saying about Tesla off camera was sometimes you can actually tell if something is accumulating or distributing if it's weaker than the market. Because you were saying, you know, if it's moving, if everything's moving together, it could just be not on its own. It could be a little weaker because it's moving with everything else. But if something's moving right. the opposite to the rest of the market, that can tell you something as well. Absolutely. So in this case, Tesla, definitely a little bit of distribution here, just a skosh at least on the day when the rest of the market is, is pretty strong. So I think that's kind of something of note there. And I wanted to, well to touch on that. But yeah, I love all of the, the fun, the canvas and the food metaphors there, <laughs> painting a lovely picture, um, hopefully for everybody on this Monday morning. Also, I do want to address the super chat. Sorry, Before we got this uh, earlier in the day. Laura Rogers, 199 super chat. Sorry, we're just looking at this now, but thank you very, very much for your support. Wolf is going to howl at the moon. Our um, <laughs> little moon, little wolf emoji, and the little party hat emoji. BTC, uh, 100K soon. Let's look at Wolf, which I believe is Tara Wolf, but I would like some confirmation on that. Hang on, let me pull this up. Um, BMR is 1100%. Huh? Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh. It's insane. That's insane. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything yet. Bitcoin miner. Oh, okay, it's a ter it's a it's a Bitcoin miner. That makes sense. Yeah, Terra Wolf. I want to look at the daily on this because today it's. I don't want to say head and shoulders, but we certainly got to a point where we had a little bit of a peak, had another peak, and we're seeing sort of a, a skosh of a neckline at that 234. Let's look at the daily here, though, on this Terra Wolf. Um, my thing is too is I, I've said this before. I always find it a little bit harder to chart um, these. Bitcoin stocks because they tend to move in tandem with Bitcoin. However, I have to say, Terra Wolf seems to be stuck in a bit of a rut here. We seem to be struggling to get above that 280 area. We have sort of a double top here. That being said, the bottom of that 107 is not bad. I mean, slight, slightly higher low than we saw earlier. So I think, yeah, if it keeps making higher lows, that, that would certainly be of interest. But I think we need to decisively break that top. I would put it this way. It looks like Terra Wolf has seen better days Indeed, I don't know if it's going to be going to the moon <laughs> quite this second. Uh, okay, well, now it's up 1,250%. Uh, Guys, this thing is absolutely skyrocketing. I know that the big kahunas covered it this morning. It's a 4.5 million share float. I'm going to load up trade ideas right now to find out what the short float is on it. I'm willing to bet, you know, that uh, it's probably not as much that as it is the fact that it's been small cappers running triple digits the past week. We started out by Holo, H-O-L-O, -O, was the first triple digit winner last week. That precipitated several triple digit winners. I'm talking about small cap cappers uh, in the subsequent days of last week. And here we go again, continuing that trend today uh, with these small cap gappers. All right, BMR is showing up as a negligible short float here on Trade Ideas, 1.19% of the 4.5 million shares is shorted. That's quite negligible, and I don't know if they're short at these levels. Where have we been on BMR um, in the past? I have no idea, so let's find out here. This is the four-hour look. Let's flip to the daily on this. Okay, so it's never been up here. So. You know, all the shorts that were initiated on this have been squeezed out, you know, obviously, unless they're, they're getting in right now. Here we go. Here comes a new hive day again. There it comes again. Here comes 30. Uh, we just touched 28.99. 30 next incoming as this absolutely continues to skyrocket over 1,200% right now on BMR. This was really the only resistance level that we had to work with. That was uh, $8, and that took place May 26th, 25th. Yeah, May 25th of um, last year, and that obviously has come and gone from a while ago. I can't believe how strong BMR is on the day. This thing continues to skyrocket. It's uh, unbelievable. But there goes the Fuge again. Here comes 18. 090. We're sitting here at 18095 with a profit taker. We're looking to de-risk a little bit in front of 181. Should we make it up there? It's been a great day on the future. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the chips are, have been carrying this market. Here comes 91s on the future. So we may get a 100 touch maybe before uh, noon today. We'll have to wait and see it there. Yeah, I mean, I was just put this in the chat because I need to address this. I, it's been fat finger season for me this Monday. It's been a fat finger kind of Monday. We had that in the meta trade, but in a much less um, horrifying way. And let's talk about this NVIDIA first, though. This NVIDIA is short. If I had scalped out of it faster, I think it would have been fine. My issue is I, you know, I, I should have set my buy order the second I got in because I would have actually been okay. I was just going to take it to 736. What happened, and why I liked it also too, just to clarify, is because it looked a little um, retracy. We did, I was watching, we were having a hard time steadily reclaiming 737. I was like, let's get short. 
So right as I'm about to get out, this thing shoots up. I try to get out and then I press my cell key because I guess my brain was in um, buy mode for some reason. And I was, you know, so I, I added more shares to this. Long story short, we extricated ourselves, but it was a bit of a sad day. Also, this, this, meta, this meta long is a story as well. So we got, I initially had, um, you know, a portion of this. I had enough for two beak wetters, right? Then I accidentally sold some of it way too early. Thank you for the bang button there. <laughs> then I added some, because I, I have to clarify, I would have added here regardless. This was not like, you know, a FOMO type ad. I did like this ad. So now that I added, because, and I like this ad too, because look, we had these, um, why I like the metal long is it was kind of rangy. It actually looks like we could flat top break this, in all honesty. Yeah, you're lower high, high, lower levels. high, flat top. Yeah, I ended up getting out here because we were taking our sweet time, and I was so frustrated after having fat fingered out so much of the position. We just got out. We scalped it out. Fair. I was pleased as punched, but um, I would be more pleased as punched oh <laughs> based God. on what we're doing here. If I have, if I can find a point of entry here on um, this flat top break, I want to get involved because I do like this look. But long story short, I really need to be proofreading my trades and being a little bit more on the ball. But you know, uh, it's how to trade and today. What I'm learning is um, maybe how not to trade. No, I'm joking. It's fine. But yeah, just just trying to learn and, and from my mistakes, hopefully, because the fat finger situations have been a bit <laughs> eye opening um, and a heart dropping today. Yeah, mm -hmm. how are you doing with the NQ? Oh, We're great. Nice. We're great. We're on our way up, Adara. Like we could be, we could get an 18-1 touch before noon. I mean, who knows? Who knows what happens here? But we just put in higher lows. We just broke through the high. Here it goes again into 91. Let's see if we can move into that 100 point area. I mean, for all my mean reversion traders there, they could be salivating out of 100 touch because maybe they're looking to take it short, right? You know, that's not my style of trade, but you know, it's valid nonetheless for those who can execute it. Uh, we're on our way up here on the future though. Lots of strength. And let's just say we're a, almost a third of a percent. We're 0.29 right now on the NQ. We're printing new highs, 93 of the highs right now. I'm talking about 18093 on the NQ, but that's not the only thing that's strong, Adara. The ES is at almost 50, 60 right now. 50, 59. Guys, we cleared 5,000 by 60 points. Unreal. All right. B people are yelling about BMR. It is halted to the upside yet again. 1,555%. This thing is up. It is halted at 34.94. Let's see what the tap is on this monster. Uh, let's just find out here. BMR. The tap right now, guys, I'm seeing currently at the close 34.95. So one penny above the close. My my mistake. So we'll see if the, the tap on this bad boy changes. I'll keep you apprised of it as uh, as we go up there. There we go on the future. There we're about to touch 18.1. We just got to 18.096 and a quarter. The strength in the future today wow. coming in. It's hot and it's on fire. Whew. Yeah, congrats to you. And honestly, I have to say too, A, I'm very happy for you. And B, as you were talking about how the future's pumping, Tesla died a little bit. So I was like, you know what? He's still behaving on his own and I feel more <laughs> confident in this short. So I'm very glad we both got a little um, joy out of that huge pump there. But seriously, congrats. That's a really nice Thank look. You. And the beak That's wetters right. are just hanging out there along the river on this fantastic Monday. The, the thesis with this Tesla short, I did miss the flat uh, bottom break here earlier as I was lamenting to Sharif off camera. But I do like, uh, still have lower highs. Uh, lower lows are a bit more of a struggle. We're kind of consolidating a bit here, but I'm going to be watching what we do with this 190, 160, 191.95 uh, area because that was certainly an area we had a little bit of support and resistance earlier. I would be then adding to the position. If we decisively break above that 192 with the swiftness, I'm saying sayonara. My first plan for a profit taker is going to be that 190.65 uh, area because, like I said, I like taking out um, part of the position at previous areas of support for shorts and resistance for longs. So that's uh, the look there. That's the thesis there. Meta, I would like to get involved in a dip buy, but I don't want to... I, I want to be a little more cautious here. My area that I'm watching for a dip buy is around that 476.50, 476.75, because that was where we had um, some, some action with I these candles these? earlier, so that's why that's where I'm watching right now, though I'm, I'm pretty happy with the Tesla short. It's just trucking along here. I also have my eye on the IWM, as I am want to do as of late. That is something... Okay, so type in B. I have been looking at... Oh. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, go, no, it's okay. No, I thought yeah. I thought BTC was happening. I got really excited. Well, it's on its way to 50, so I was I was trying to get the oh, team man to help me pull it up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, no worries. Sorry, ahead, sorry for the pause there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy with Netflix. I've been looking at IWM. I like this stutter step to the upside. I have it on the three minute chart on my side chart, so I'm going to be watching for dip opportunities here. Just getting in, really scalpy with it. Also, Hamptons Trader, Good, yeah. how happy are you about the Swifties? Okay. 
I am Thank displeased you. as punch, I have to say. About, displeased? Yeah, with, with the Swifties. Okay. Oh, that was what course. they were asking. With, with the uh, Kansas City yes, win. Yes, of course. I, we knew that. We, we, we kind of knew that you would be upset about that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it would be. Good, so. It'd be shocking what if I was What was your happy. take of uh, what's Ron Reynolds' girlfriend called again? Blake Lively. Yeah, so she was the one next to uh, Taylor Swift all day, right? Nice spice. Uh, what's say it again, Katina Man? Ice Spice. Ice Spice. She was with Taylor Swift there. Oh, that's a that's a PR <laughs> friendship. That's actually a PR friendship because there was some drums there with her old boyfriend. But so uh, no one was mentioning the fact that it was Blake Lively beside Taylor Swift. Every shot was like Taylor this, Taylor that. Like really? Blake Lively, like didn't you know wasn't like a, a, c a celebrity or anything. That's unfair. I Gossip that girl icon, icon. Like oh my gosh, that that's very upsetting to me. Um, yeah. No. Did you watch again? Uh, I didn't watch the game, no. Yeah, I yeah. saw, like, bits and pieces. And I know, like, Victoria Beckham and David Beckham were hyping up their Super yes. Bowl commercial yes. um, incessantly. Like, I was trying to watch podcasts, and I kept getting the ad, like, we have a big thing. Adara, we're about to touch 18-1 right now in the future. Here we go. Uh, 98 and a quarter HOD as we speak. We're going to get to that 100-point level. I'm not taking it out here, okay? We're just going to let this one run. Let's see if we can clear 100 um, and pump up. We're a third of a percent right now, Adara. So the market awfully strong. It's not just these small cappers that's pumping. It's a chip world, baby, and it's the future. We're on our way up here. Let's see if we can clear that 100-point level or whether that's going to be in the line of the sand and then my, my bears are going to print today. We've been talking about accumulation and distribution. Let's watch what happened here. New high of day, 18-101 on our way up. Do we wick and reject here or what? Let's keep an eye out on the future. Oh my God! Yeah, there's there the, today. You know, we were talking today. Oh, not that much is happening in the market. Like the watch list, there wasn't that too many catalysts. And then the market was like, um, "Excuse me, <laughs> hold my Coca-Cola before earnings tomorrow. We're gonna go wild." So you yes, know, I have to respect it. It gives us a lot to talk about. We were saying that you know before we came on as well. Even Tesla trying to catch a skosh of a bit. I say trying because it's not been incredibly successful. But you know, I'm keeping an eye on Tesla, watching what it wants to do here. Meta took the heck off here. Talk about a flat top break. Um, there was no opportunity for a dip buy. This one flew with the swiftness. swiftness. We're getting close to 479. This is insane here. Um, NVIDIA also still really strong. Uh, do not know why I tried to short this guy earlier. Let's see if we push above 740 here. Oh no, 741, what am I saying? We're already past 740. Google strong, Microsoft strong, um, all the ETFs strong. It's really hard to find a way to, to wedge yourself into the market right now. I have to say everything's already moving, but congrats to you and your position. And hopefully Tesla um, takes some kind of hint so I know what to do either way here. Here we go. Wow, that's a good Here look. comes 110 Adara, and there goes 110. It is now 110 and a quarter HOD on the NQ March contract. We're getting into resistance level one here on pivots. So if you're a fan of pivots, we are inching a lot closer. This excludes all pre-market price action. So this is pivots based on the open and subsequent price action. We're right there right now. Do we find that rejection level? So technically pivots is at 114. We're at 112 and three quarters HOD right now. Uh, the green dotted line is the actual pivot. And then the teal, trust the teal, um, is the teal dotted line, believe it or not. The teal is the teal. I like that. <laughs> I don't know why I had to repeat that, but in any event, uh, so keep your eye out on the future. We could find a resistance level here. Let's not guess. Let's just see where this one takes us. Uh, Ash, Arm, bye, 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 bye. Yes, Arm is uh, pumping. It's, it's, uh, it's a hell of a name on the day today. No question about it. Let's pull out the Arm chart over here. It is a blue sky setup, guys. There is no higher high than that 164 we just put in at 1115. So it's your guess as good as mine. You're going to have to use um, other indicators like RSI or the money flow index on balance volume, any of the other indicators that we use in technical analysis because you're not going to find any price action north of here. So uh, you're going to have to employ something else to try to figure out where we uh, top out. But right now we put in a couple of lower highs um, through the break of 164. The closing print though, all of the closing prints on these five minute candles on ARM are south of 160. So despite the fact we do have an HOD of 164, the, the, you know, the committed money hasn't been able to push this one to close above 160 quite yet. 
So let's watch that 160 with some interest. Do we find a top here at 160 on the day and then maybe start retracing into that 140 area? Yeah, believe it or not, that's where VWAP is. In fact, it's a little lower than that on ARM. It's at 138 and three quarters. So we're literally $20 above VWAP right now on a name that's supposed to not be <laughs> a small cap gapper, but is trading like one um, in most part because of the, the float. It's 10% of the float is trading as SoftBank still holding 90% um, of uh, the outstanding shares. Uh, keep in mind, guys, for all my ARM investors, March 12th, the, the blackout dates end. So there could be some major fluctuations in ARM, ARM holdings, on March 12th, remember Neil and I pulled that up last week to see when the blackout date was. It typically is six months um, out from the IPO date. So we were looking to see the exact day there. All right, Adara. Now the high a day is exactly 114 and a quarter on the NQ March contract. And that's exactly where my resistance level one is on pivot. So for, for now, it is acting as a key resistance level. Shout out to Nicole Harris and Hotlana. Haven't seen you in a minute here, Nicole. Is the spy is spy new meme stock and where is it going? Good question. We were just finished talking about that. All time highs right now, Nicole, on the spy. All time highs on the NQ, the uh, the ES, you name it. Any futures related um, contract or index, we are at all time highs. So hard to know using price action. We're going to have to look and use uh, some other indicators. That's not for the show. We'll have to do that off the show, Adair. Yeah, I mean, the spy is, is a crazy look. I am trying to finagle my way, or bamboozle to shout out to Sharif, bamboozle mm. my way into an IWM long here. I like that we're holding right below that 203. If we break decisively below that 270, I am out. I did um, make my exit. I hopped out the Cybertruck. Uh, that is Tesla's not on the Amex era. I did hop out of the Cybertruck. Uh, we got into that... That two, 192 area, so I had to leave. I might have left a little bit too early, but you know what? Like, I, I saw we got into that 192, and I was like, you know, you have to go. And we were doing so with the viciousness as well. Also, it looks like we did just get entered into the IWM, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. Currently in this, basically looking to, I mean, like, I, I always, I always kind of say with, with my longs, take out a previous uh, resistance, short, take it out a previous support. So basically, I'm looking for that one, that 203.20 area. Should I add a little bit to this position, which I... I don't think I will. Like I said, I will only really DCA if we pause at other areas of interest. So if we pause uh, at that 202.80 area, maybe I'll add. But right now I'm comfortable with where I am in this position and just we're going to scalp the whole thing out of that 203.20 should we get there. So just kind of tiny baby scalp, trying to warm myself back in after some questionable trades earlier. Cough, cough, um, NVIDIA and the fat finger situation that was meta. Speaking of meta... Meta kind of uh, curling back into that 478. This could be a dip by opportunity pour moi. Um, I do like this. I like that we got to that previous top and then we bounced off with the swiftness. If we get kind of back into that 477-ish area, more 477.5 again, and we hold that, I might actually jump back in on this. And again, just kind of eye that area right below 479, just looking for resistance, looking for support, and just dipping it in out here, like riding an elliptical or a peloton. Uh, Thomas Johnson, AMD breaking HOD. Let's look at AMD. Oh, whoo, whoo, that's a nice look. Higher high, higher high, higher high, higher low, higher low, higher low. Uh, all I have to say is fantastic. Thank you for pointing this one out to me, Thomas Johnson. Uh, this is a really good look on AMD. And if there was a dip, I might hop in here. Also, I don't want to say flat top, but it looks like I, I do find this area of 170, just shy of 176 interesting because we tested it twice, then um, decisively broke below it, or blo broke above it, sorry, with one gorgeous candle to the upside. Uh, Joanna Brewster saying AMD headed to 180. And you know what? Honestly, can't disagree. It's a really strong look here. Shout out to everyone here mentioning this. I think these are all uh, really good looks. And I'm just letting my little IWM, uh, hopefully not IW murder me. That'd be really nice. But we'll <laughs> see. Uh, it's at what an IW Monday we have had so far, let me tell you. Uh, how are you doing? What are you looking at? <sighs> New high of day right now, Adaro. Eight, one, two, one and a half. It is a bit of um, a topping tail candle, though, right now on the five. It is, looks like a, a doji and a possible reversal. I would not be surprised at all if we reverse off here. Pivots have been working, whether on the large caps or the NQ4. Well, you know, I don't want to say every day, but they have 
played their part. So we are at that level. I do expect some resistance here. Now it's gonna be interesting to watch what we do here. Since we cleared 18.1 by some distance, 18.121 and a half, if we come back into 18.1, are we now holding that as a key support level? To me, I mean, we didn't even hold up at 18.1. So the, the price level that I'd be looking at is that 18, let's just say 18.094, oh sorry, 8.4, the top end of this range over here before we broke out. This is what I'm talking about. If we come back in and test this level, but it could be in front of 18.1. I mean, that's what I wanna see here. So let's, let's watch, see exactly what happens. Um, on the future, only holding uh, one, so just uh, you're letting that baby ride here. Scott H telling me about RNLX, the other small cap gapper du jour that is running a big boy, started its life out today at 38 pennies. That was Friday's close. That feels like a long time ago. We are now halted at a buck and three quarters, 174 exactly, the HOD. This is the five minute look on RNLX. Let's have a look though at that one minute because it'll show you the plethora of halts to the upside. One, two to the upside, then we get one downside, then another two to the upside, and then another one to the downside, and then guess what? Another two to the upside. So we have a nice two to one ratio here with respect to up halts and down halts that there are on our NLX. Let's talk a little bit about the details of this, uh, of this particular name. So the float, large, 91 and a half million shares for RNLX. Let's find out what the short float is, if any. Shout out Trade Ideas over here and Michael Noss and his crew, RNLX. So negligible short float, according to Trade Ideas here, um, about less than 1% of the float is shorted, 0.82, so not uh, of a concern to us at this point anyway. It is now open and down again, looks like it might halt down at 159. So we've seen the two to one ratio of up halts to down halts, so keep your eye on that continuation. It is now halted again at 159, RNLX, keep your eye on a possible up move here to break and to make a new high day. Let's keep our eye out on that $2 area um, because it, well, it's the whole dollar area. So we'll have to see if that acts as a level of resistance. What happened initially at one? So we halted south of one, we halted at 97 pennies, broke, actually opened, no, no, where do we open? We opened at 108, tanked to 90 and a quarter and then ended up closing at a buck 04. So that upward pressure right here, use, identifying this hammer candle over here as we're just talking about keeping an eye on accumulation and distribution. What a move up. That took it south of one, south of the halt level, and then got bought right back up, pushing it to that buckle four close. I'm talking about RNLX. Keep your eye on that. Yeah, I was gonna say too, um, with, I know a lot of the small caps you trade tend to be less halty, for lack of a better term, mm. but do you, so I like that, so you basically just would continue to analyze the halty ones like you would any other stock, just using candles and volume. You know what, and, I can't tell you something. I've actually noticed before that halt levels actually look like candlestick patterns with making higher highs and then a higher low. And the, the halt will be a higher low because the halt will be higher than the previous, the down halt, sorry. Oh, okay. The down halt will be higher than the previous down halt. The up halts will be higher than the previous up halts. So it'll look like literally, and I, I can show you here exactly yeah, on BMR. Let me show you. Yeah, yeah, I think it is RNLX. And so it ends up being the halts look like just pullback. So you have up halt, up halt, down halt. So this is the, the low over here. And then you make another higher low over here and then another higher low on the down halts. So it's like literally continuation. It just would be, it's a lot harder to get in though because yeah, then, illiquid. Well, that's true. And then you see support too with that 115 even with Wait, the halts. Like that's, absolutely. thank you for, for showing me that. I really appreciate that. And I feel like hopefully I learned something new today. I was saying to Sharif earlier too, I always feel like I'm, gleaning a little bit of info on the Sharif small Damn. cap world and the Sharif small cap <laughs> analysis because it's not, um, you know, I, I weirdly have my, my GLP-1 trading and and the um, the indices, which is a new thing, and the mega caps, but I, yeah, I think it's really cool to learn oh about different God. things. Speaking of mega caps, um, Meta is trying to to you know, win her way back into my heart here. No, I'm, I'm, Meta's not even on my bad side. I'm actually positive on Meta. I'm gonna try to get involved here though with this 475, 70, or 477, 75 here. Uh, Cause I like this look, I like this dip. I like to take this right to that uh, 479. We're holding this well. It's around the area we had that previous top, although a little bit higher. I might've been too late to the party on this. I'm not gonna chase it. Oh, too late. 
Yeah, it's gone. Okay, well, if she comes back down, I'll, you know, I'll be interested. This is the thing, you have to keep your eye on all the stocks, right? You have to watch them all like a hawk. Um, nothing to report with IWM. I added a little bit because we held that area really well, but we haven't really done anything. We're, we're always within a couple cents of my point of entry, so no news there. Tesla continuing to decide what, to decide what it would like to be when it grows up, but it seems to see, be like it would like to be short because we try to get into that 192 that we reject with a viciousness. I need a bit more confirmation, confluence, what have you, before getting involved in here, but I still like the concept of a 192 short because that was where that flat bottom broke. That was where we had a little bit of... Um, push up earlier. That's actually pretty much where we opened. So I think that could be of note here to me as well. But mainly that meta pop I'm interested in. NVIDIA doing something similar to meta too. We're not going short NVIDIA. We're going to go long NVIDIA perhaps per chance here. Um, and then get out probably around that 740 area just shy. So it's going to give yourself a little bit of more room here because NVIDIA does demand that of you. If you want to have a win NVIDIA, you got to <laughs> have to sometimes uh, bear and grin NVIDIA. Grin and bear, but I swapped it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a it's a stressful stock, but I think going short earlier, as much Bat. as that would have worked had I set it up better, was a mistake. I hear a pampit. Pampit, baby. Shout out to Michael Lloyd. I know he likes to write pampit. Uh, look, no, uh, the the NQ holding up for now above 18.1. So we were talking about that 18.1 as the possible support level. Let's not get too excited as we still are below that 18.121 HOD. But shout out to the other people in the chat yelling about MGIH as well as they should be, Adira, because we're halted on this bad boy 511% today on MGIH. We have three small cap gappers. I was going to say three in triple digits. Excuse me. We got two in triple digits and one in quadruple digits. That is BMR, though. Let's show this one, Ram Ram as we are at halted at $6.30 on MGIH. Let's find out what the tap is for you guys on this one, MGIH. All right, the tap, 649, so currently above the current trading price. This one halted at one, sorry, 11.4502. So we should be opening up in exactly like three seconds here. Let's see if we do open up at the five minutes, or are we gonna be a 10 minute halt over here? So it we're, we're, looks like we're going to be a 10-minute halt, possibly, on MGIH. Keep your eye on that. And the longer we're halted, Kat $16. the Katina man is now $16 in the money on ARM. So he oh fought with ARM, and he won, baby, as it is on its way down into that 143 area, maybe 140 incoming. Shout out to the Katina man. Keep your eye on the chat for his new positions, guys. But here, this, this is what we were talking about, MGIH. Looks like it's going to be a 10-minute halter, Dara, as it is up 511%. We don't have any levels, I believe, above this current trading. No. So MGIH, obviously a former runner. And you can see here by the chart, it's had outsized days. This is the most amount of volume it's ever done. This is as high as it's ever been. So it's a blue sky setup from where we are here. And uh, obviously showing the most amount of interest. Uh, with respect to details on MGIH, one and a quarter million share float, okay? So one and a quarter million share float on this bad boy. And uh, yeah, keep your eye on that. See if it continues to squeeze. So let me just move this over. As the future now has broken down below 18.1. So we were talking about that 18.1 holding as support. It is now broken and it did put in that lower high on the future. So look at that 18.121 high and then we get an 18.115 high and down we go. Let's keep an eye on this level though. This is the level we talked about as being the peak where we had a key level of resistance. I'm talking about that 18.0. 8.5, let's say around that area, kind of a random area, but that's where the price action takes us. Let's see if we hold up above this area, guys, on the futures. And as I look at BMR, oh my goodness, BMR is tanking. BMR just dropped $14 at Dara off that high. We topped out at 34.94 on BMR. We're just trading in the 21s right now. So this one tanking off the top, I hope. People Ooh. use good risk management principles with this bad boy because you see what can happen here. It's a crazy one, baby. 
Yeah, and I see what you mean too. Like even this lower high, lower high, lower high. Yep. Like, I think it's that. Thank you for talking me through that. I feel like I, I learned, you know, a new My thing pleasure. today. We are how to trade. So that is, of course, always the goal. I think one thing too um, with halts, I always talk about this. My fear of small caps comes from the first day I traded. There was a <laughs> little remember. guy named Axla. And I talk about this a lot, so I apologize. But but what Axla taught me was that small caps are very stressful. This is one of my first stocks I ever traded. I, I halted the second I got into it. Uh, I actually didn't end up taking that much of a loss in it because it did halt down about a buck or so. Uh, but still, it was definitely, I didn't have my risk management principles set in stone. I would still argue there could still be better, to be quite frank with you. But they were certainly not there my first day of trading. So I think to me, that, that was certainly a harsh lesson. So I tend to avoid small caps like the plague for that reason. But I think congrats <laughs> to anybody who did well in that. And I, I would echo what Sharif said about risk management. Because I know you, like, and, and I remember that evacs that you got out of right before it halted. Remember like, that? That's, that, was that was crazy. But yeah, I think... Especially if you if you are newer to small caps or if you avoid them, you know, like the, it's it's hard to resist the FOMO, but sometimes you just gotta gotta stay away. All right, Adair, sorry, I have to interrupt Please you do. because MGIH just opened up, guys. Here comes eight dollars on MGIH load, bro. Uh, we're at seven ninety three. We're gonna okay. We, that was a false halt. It looked like we were gonna halt at seven ninety three. There goes eight. Here comes eight thirty one. I can't. Here comes nine. All right, your auctioneer mode, baby. Because uh, I'm not punching into this, obviously. So I can just observe it and uh, yell about it for uh, for anybody who's in it. Uh, but we are topping out at nine right now. 897, high of day. Accumulating. Looks like we're going to halt here at this level, unless it's going to be a second fake halt. Uh, let's watch intently and see if this bad boy halts to the upside. Nope, fake halt for now. Here comes... No, we break above that level. So the algos hold it off and then pump it right back up because it looked like we were gonna halt there and uh, being another fake halt. So here comes 57 again. Do we halt at 57? 957 printing here. We gotta run here for a little bit before we get the gray out. Let's see if we halt. We're definitely a lot. No, another fake halt and another move right back down. So the algo's playing with this one. We're up over 800%, 957 again, high a day. I can't believe this, bro. This is insane. This is insane, it's making me sweaty. Yelling about all this. <laughs> Here we go, right back down. This thing just dropped a dollar and a half in like a second here. So 9.57 rejection, didn't halt Ram Ram. And there it goes, all the way back down to 7.50. Bamboozlement Central. We just fluctuated 150 points in, in a second there. Uh, on this small cap gapper, lots of excitement. Adara's like waving herself over here. She's like fanning herself. She's like, there's just too much going on, Madness. baby. There's too much going on, I can't handle this. I mean, no, like, it, it, to be clear, having the time of my life over here, so happy to be in these markets, yes, like, right? Like, you gotta, you gotta fan yourself. You gotta be like, how this, is this real? <laughs> how is that real? Someone was asking in the chat, I apologize, I forget who it was, but how do we find these stocks? So we use Trade Ideas has volume movers, Benzinga, shout out to them. Shout out to both Benzinga and Trade Ideas. They'll also have um, stocks with news. And as Sharif pointed out, a lot of these uh, small cappers especially will be putting out the news right in the morning. So when I get to sit down to do the watch list, Benzinga will be like, popping it up and so then I know I have to jump Dang. on it. Also, if something is moving a lot, Benzinga will kind of remind you of it. Like, yes. give you a nice little friendly nudge. Like, hey, this thing's still trading up. Wake up, bro. Yeah, literally yeah. like smacking you across the I love the face what like Neil wrote animation. in the chat. Did you see what Neil wrote in the chat? Madness, question mark. This is trading. Yes, that this is, is as exciting as it gets. Say it again, Neil. <laughs> he's like, he's like, yo, bro, you did it wrong. You're supposed to say, this is Sparta. This is trading. Yes, it's a very exciting day, especially if you're long today and you're a small cap gapper trader because there's been so many yeah, opportunities. Yeah, if you were a small cap gapper trader, I bet you are pleased as punch. I don't want to make any assumptions, but I would assume you're, you're pretty happy. Um, also, you know, it was the day for the longs, except for my long and NVIDIA. Um, I just want to talk about it because we're trying to learn from our mistakes. And um, I think today we're going to be out video for the foreseeable future. I like, I was trying to get in on a pullback here at that 742. We got in uh, and I was basically, literally I was going to scalp this out to 742, 742.50 because we, we were, you know, riding that pretty well. Then we ended up falling to the downside. I gave it to 740. We got to 740. I had to say sayonara. Um, but yeah, we, we're falling back here. This could be head and shoulders. Again, I don't want to diagnose a move, but look where we're troughing out. It's the same area we troughed out earlier, which is where I tried to go short. So being really cognizant of this area. However, if we failed at 741, I might have to actually be NVIDIA to the downside. But for now, we're going to be out NVIDIA, learning from mistakes. As Obi <laughs> said, where's the next trade? Something I'd like to know. Right now, the IWM is still going fine. Um, we were indecision uh, WM for a moment, but now we need to, we seem to be uh, seeing an 
increased WM, so I'm going to stop with the IWM. Can I show a happy. bottoming tail or a topping tail yes, candle? Yes, please do. Here is your, this is the most topping tailish of candles in the history of all topping tail candles. No, I don't know if that's true, but you know, I'm going to go with it. Look at this, 957 high, and then it ended up halting at 660, okay? So not only do we have a $3 uh, descent there, but the body is non-existent. And this is really kind of like the prototypical description of a bearish candle. Watch it absolutely skyrocket up because I said that. And I, I want to use it as a bearish description. But this is as bearish as it gets, guys. I mean, I mean, look at this. No body. The entire candle is a long upper wick. And there's virtually no upper, uh, lower wick. And the body is non-existent. So let's see if this one, what time is this supposed to open up, by the way? A 152, sorry, 1152.23 is where it closed out at. We're at 11.55, so we have another two minutes uh, before this bad boy opens. I'm talking about MGIH. Oh, sorry, my, uh, my face was covering the ticker there. MGIH, topping tail candle, and uh, yeah, let's see what this one does, but everybody's yelling about these uh, small cap gappers today as well. They should be, as they are absolutely skyrocketing. All right, let's talk a little bit about this futures trade. Because didn't I say that this was going to be on the support level? Like, I swear to God I said Hold that. It. I swear to God I said that. Uh, for a random reason, it was price action based, not uh, psychologically resistance based. This is where we topped out on the future. 18.050. Here we go again. We're above 18.1. So we do have a descent break below 18.1. So I hope some people got long here because that was the level I called out. And here we go again. I don't know if we break the highs though. I mean, because... We're still putting in lower highs here on the future, right? So here's the initial crest into 18,121. And then you have the other crest here into 18,115. And we haven't popped up above that level. So even though we did get that initial bounce off 18,085, we still haven't put in a higher high. So for my trend traders there, you should be suspicious of this pop and be looking to de-risk if you just got in at 18,085. You should be de-risking de here as, you know, we could absolutely break down. So... Let's see what we do. Got a few more minutes before the real deal with Neil comes on, so make sure to check that bad boy out. He'll be dropping hot lines as he typically does um, on the real deal with Neil. That starts at around 12 o'clock. All right, guys, MGIH still halted. Keeping an eye on that one. I want to see if this one breaks down with the mother of all topping tail candles, baby. Uh, halted at $6.60 a era. Tell them to tap real quick on this bad boy. Still at six sixty. so the tap right now at the... The closing price. RNLX though is halted. Oh, it just opened up. So RNLX opened up again. Let's uh, flip back to RNLX here. We had it on the G. Nope. RNLX. So this bad boy was halted. And here we go now. We're halted to the downside. So two downward halts now. Let's see if we get that hold of this one to third level. Right now it's up 250%. Yeah, I mean, talk about um, a candle in the wild, like what we have there with oh, OMGIH, yeah. uh, because what a look there. Oh I mean, that, that's a crazy move. I have to say, feel, feel pleased as punch to be part of this market. As Neil said, this is trading, and I mean, wow. Yeah, I know what you have also. I was really concerned about that era, that top being a bit of a, a area of resistance, a bit of a sticking point. We only got part filled here at that uh, 20320, so I'm going to be super cognizant of this area. Uh, and then once I get the rest of that piece out, I'm saving a piece for the dream, um, as, as Sharif likes to say. And I think certainly the dream for IWM could be dying out a little bit, could be turning into a nightmare. But um, as Beyonce says, this could be a sweet dream or a beautiful nightmare, but we're going to have to wait and see on that. Right now, I think it could be pretty sweet, given that the rest of the market is flying up and IWM is strong when it's not always. Hi. There was a Beyonce commercial yesterday. Did I heard, heard about, about it, it, but I didn't see it. Yeah, neither what was did it I. For? I have no idea. I just heard about it as part of the highlight. Neil, did yeah. you see the Beyonce commercial? No, okay. We sometimes don't get the, the same commercials as the Americans. We were supposed oh. to a couple of years ago. Say that again, uh, Ram Ram? Reenact it for us, she said, but I didn't see it, Ram Ram, so I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't reenact it. will be Beyonce. It. <laughs> no, I won't be Beyonce. Uh, but <laughs> um, no, sometimes we don't get the same commercials as uh, Americans. We were supposed to, uh, a few years ago, get the same feed. So if we watched it on Fox, we were supposed to see the American commercials, and then our equivalent over here, CTV, we were supposed to get Canadian commercials. That didn't end up happening. I don't know what ended up happening to that, but when I put Fox on, I just see the CTV feed, which is not what I want. Right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, 
future Eddie yelling about Verizon. Verizon. A lot of All people right. yelling about Verizon. Okay, let's have a look, man. I have no issue looking at Verizon. Uh, trading on the New York, of course, VZ. What what's happening with Verizon? It's up 0.23. All right, let's see. Maybe there's something I don't know about here. Let's have a look. Verizon today. Uh, what is this? Um, just looking here. There's a headline. What is this? New grant from NTIA focuses on accelerating ORAN across multiple carriers and vendors globally. What the hell is this? Okay. I don't know what this is. I have to read it. It's too long right now. Why are people yelling about Verizon? Oh, was oh. The, I see the Beyonce commercial was for Verizon. All right. Well, it's up two thirds of a percent. It's finding resistance at 40, though, Adara. Yeah. Uh, clearly finding that key level of resistance right there. We'll see if it can break through 40. As I look at the, the book over here, there's not too much size at 40, to be quite fair. And we have broken through uh, 4001, technically the high of day. So if there's any sellers around 40, they're either getting in at that level or they're iceberging at the moment because, well, they're not reflected on the book. So, uh, yeah, interesting. I didn't know that it was a, a Verizon uh, commercial. All right, guys, let's look at the future because look how many consecutively lower highs we're putting in. So even though we broke above 18.1, it's been lower high, lower high, and another lower high right now. Let's see if we get that break of 18.085. Because while well, we did bounce up off that key level last time, and I, that's the level I kept telling you guys about, because we had crested out there initially. So we did find uh, that key level of resistance flipping the support, but for how long? Especially in the face of all these lower highs over here. I'm gonna be watching this particular level to see if we make a newer low. And then if we do break below that, I'll be looking to the low end of this consolidation range at 18.065 as the next resistance level. And then we'll be looking obviously at 18.050. That's where VWAP is and that is the 50 point level as well. So key psychological, not key psychological, but a psychological our support level. We'll have to see what we get here on the future. Uh, Scott H, M-G-I-H open. And it is back up. Adara, can you believe this thing? No. Up seven hundred and a quarter percent again. This bad boy was halted at six and a quarter, and there it just shot up into nine. But it hasn't broken the high a day. Nine fifty-seven, clearly the high at the moment, and we're about a dollar south of that right now. But yeah, this was quite bamboozling because I'm sitting here yelling about how this is the mother of all bearish candles, topping tail candles. It makes me look like a dang fool because then it gaps right back up as uh, as I talked about that. So yeah, maybe I, I shouldn't have pontificated on that. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like, you know, the, the, you see a candle pattern coming in a candle pattern. MGIH looked like it was due for a pullback, yeah. and it just decided to bamboozle you. And sometimes they do yeah. that. Also, I love, like, all the different layouts that Ramin and Fabian always are trying. Oh, yeah. Because I just noticed I'm next to my dying IWM. Uh, we're going to get out of her because she's getting back to my point of entry, and I do not want to be involved in this. But we got some nice fills earlier. This was net positive. Um, was it? Yes, it was. Net positive. So I have to say, please just punch, you know? Like I said, trying to learn a little bit from every trade. And, um, and yeah, that's my, that's my thesis on that. All right, guys. Neil is ready with Real Deal. With Neil. Here we go, real deal, and low float, short squeeze. What's the difference? Do you want to trade one, not trade the other? Like, why is, a, is one squeeze different from another? And I feel like it's a pretty important question to ask today. But first things first, as a trader, does it matter if a stock is going parabolic because it's got a short squeeze, or does it matter if the reason behind the move is that it's got a very low float. Well, to steal it from the rock, it doesn't matter the reason the stock is squeezing because the fundamental principle is exactly the same thing. And for those of you that, if you, look, if you're interested um, and you go back and you look at famous short squeezes back in the day, go read about Volkswagen or uh, more recently the meme craze and, and GameStop and AMC and all that good stuff. But if you've been trading in, this, in the last few months, the different type of squeeze and really the bigger types of squeezes have had nothing to do with how many shares are short. So it hasn't been about people betting against the stock with short positions, and then too many shorts piling in, so when the stock rises, 
there is a crowded trade to the exit, there's not enough liquidity, and they're just essentially trying to find offers that aren't there because you've got too much of the float soaked up short. That was the play. Recently, the play has simply been, well, there's just not enough shares out there in the first place. So if there aren't enough shares out there in the first place and the float was just too small or the available float was too small, you've been getting all these squeezes. Now, what does it look like? What can it look like? It could be anything from a stock like the one I'm going to show you here today, BMR, which has a 3 million share float, has done, as I'm watching it today, 112 million shares traded, is up 1,000%. The short float on BMR, if there's your float, 3.4 million, the short float, 1%. It doesn't matter whether people were short into this overnight. Completely irrelevant. Up, up 1,000% regardless. Because 3 million available float is nothing. The stock closed at $2. So when it was gapping up on news of a deal with NVIDIA and was already at $4 in the pre-market, you're talking about a very small notional value of available shares. You're, I mean, that's essentially nothing. It's 70, $7 million. That's a prop trader's account on a floor. So for that to get bought up, now if the majority of that gets bought up and you don't sell, then who are you hitting on the offer for anybody that might be short? It can be a very small amount of short traders out there, but anybody that needs to buy back, there were never shares there to begin with, and there's even less now as it starts to go higher. So the mechanics are basically the same thing. It's the lack of an offer in this particular case and no liquidity. But it's not because people are stuck shorted. It's because the float's so small and someone can soak it up with a small amount of buying power. And once it's soaked up, absolute nonsense can, can occur. And then it's just like any other squeeze. Now, the one difference for this type of squeeze, I will get this out there, they are going to revert. They tend to revert a little bit faster. It's not the same thing is trying to unwind a big hedge fund short. Typically speaking, these go so parabolic, it works both ways. If someone soaked up that float, it's harder for them to get out on the way back. So they tend to come down pretty quickly, sometimes on the same day. But you might be asking yourself, is this only going to happen on low float names that I've never heard of, like BMR getting an NVIDIA deal? And the answer is a resounding, it doesn't just happen on smaller names. This can happen on a company that you've all heard of, like, not AMD, I want to say ARM. Okay, there we go, ARM. I had AMD on the mind. ARM, why is this one making a similar parabolic move to the upside? And let's look at the daily chart for a second. How does this happen on a company that is in 90, per, the technology is in 99% of the smartphones out there in the market? It's a very popular investable name. How does that happen to the stock? Because SoftBank owns 90% of the company. And when, that, when they own 90% as of the IPO, and that's all that got released, there's a limited amount of shares available in a name that a lot of institutions want to own and want to buy and hold. So you have a lot of buy and hold when there's limited amounts of shares, and when it starts to go, anybody that shorts it and its valuation is insane, or not insane, but it's a little bit high, you can get squeezes like this. So first things first, that you've got to remember, it doesn't matter what the short float is. If you have a low, relatively flow float name that starts to break out and go parabolic, you immediately jump away from normal trading mode and go right into, this thing is nuts, this is like a GameStop. Arm is not GameStop. Arm is not AMC. It is a legitimate company that will be here for a long time and they're gonna make, they're gonna make money and all that good stuff. But when it makes a move like this, it is now a squeeze. It might be a different type of squeeze, but it is 100% a squeeze, any shape or form of it. And you've got to switch gears. And I'm going to show you the example of that in my trading because I was a, I sold some of my personal account. I'm hating myself for it. But I was looking for, hey, it's giving me consolidation shorts where I can risk 50 cents to try to make a couple of dollars. And then the second, I was thinking short. So when it gave me an in entry here, you're like, ah, okay, maybe I'll make a couple bucks back into VWAP. Once it broke out and started going stupid parabolic, you then have to make a totally different trade. I went from risking 50 cents to try to make a couple of dollars on a pullback to I'm now going to try to short it risking three, four, five dollars to make $10 moves. 
And that is a switch that you have got to flip because it has gone from one phase to another. And if you just put stocks in the category of, well, if it's got a low, if it's got a high short float, I always trade it that way. It's like Carvana, I always am in that mode. Then you're gonna miss out when something like this happens. Arm does not have a high short float. And it might be getting higher as it makes moves up, but it has nothing to do with that why it's going. So when you're scanning for things that might give you parabolic movers or reasons to trade it for bigger percentages, it's not just about that short flow, which everyone likes to talk about. Make sure on your scanner, if I use trade ideas here, I make sure I got a field for the actual float. When you have an IPO come out, how many shares are available? Who's holding on to the boat? When does the lockup expire? All these things become very, very important. Because if you're not aware of that, then you might get caught trading arm, thinking it's going to move like a regular semi-stock semi that has 100, million, um, 100 billion market cap. And it's not. That's just the way it is. Because there is fundamentally no difference between a lack of offer because there's too many people short or a lack of offer because you've got too little amount of shares available in the float. It doesn't make a difference. The point is, nobody can hit the offer. There's no offer to hit. And that's the, that's the fundamental principle why it happens this way. And it works in both ways on the way down. That's what you see with this chart. You're just going to get outsized moves. So you accept that rationality has gone out the window in trading, and you are now moving into almost like a meme mode on a stock that you wouldn't have thought about it for. So you always have to be able to take that step back and, and assess what is going on in that stock. The why can be important, but switching gears like we talked about last week is more important in the moment. So understanding why this can happen in a name like ARM so that you can switch gears very quickly it behooves you to do it as a trader. It might make you flip into the long a little bit faster. It certainly will make you more patient if you're trying to fade something like this. So whether it is that, whether it is BMR, the new game is not necessarily about that big short float. It is about the low floats. And I'll give you, a, I'll give you one last hint as to a catalyst that you can see for why you will get low float runners and what is the biggest catalyst recently for them. And I'm going to pick on you, Mullen, because that's what I like to do every now and then. And that's going to be the reverse split. So the easiest way to see the float get tiny on a stock is when they reverse split. And how many times have we seen a pattern, stock reverse splits, falls like you would expect it, but then because the float is a lot smaller when you reverse split, they do these crazy irrational breakouts. So reverse split on Mullen. It tanked like you would have expected it to tank. That's what bad companies do. And then it made a huge rally off of lows. Could it do it again? I don't know. But I know that because the float is smaller, it can start doing things that you normally would equate to your game stops, um, for lack of a better term, your Carvanas. They're in the same kind of pocket because the float is small. So at the end of the day, as I said, it does not matter why there is nothing to hit on the offer. Just understand that a squeeze is a lack of liquidity as the stock is going up. Doesn't matter why, whether it's a low float or whether it's a short, whether it's just simply too many, too many shares short, it's going to effectively be the same thing. And you've got to trust uh, in yourself to adjust your trading accordingly. So you're seeing a lot more of these low float runners. I don't think this is going away because I've never seen so many things on the market trading with less than a million shares available or under 5 million shares in available float. So this isn't going anywhere, and you've got to be able to adjust your trading. That's the real deal. Short float versus low float, it doesn't matter. They can both squeeze. All right. Thanks wow. for that, Neil. Appreciate it. As informative and insightful as always. We have Brenkles, the floor trading manager, baby. Something you've got to tell us today, though. Yeah, so the great thing about Select Vantage, Real Trading, Trader TV Live, Day Trade the World is there's many opportunities to get involved in trading. And I'm here to offer another one for viewers that are in the Toronto GTA area. Um, we will be having a. Wow. <laughs> so the Katina man's printing. Now we know Sean, that. Come on, give me like two minutes. $22. $22 in the money on that arm short, baby. I can't win with this guy. I can't win with this guy. All right, let's refocus. Yes, um, go for it. 
Wayne and I, which is the other trading floor manager, are bringing on some new traders February 20th. So we have a couple spaces available, which is a first. So if you are interested, you're in the Toronto GTA area and would like to come join the floor full time, um, there is an opportunity right now. So send your resumes to wei at selectvantage.com. So I'll say it one more time. Yep. W-E-I at selectvantage.com. Huge opportunity to come. You could annoy Sean every day, <laughs> talk to him about stocks. Neil's available too for five minutes and uh, all, the whole team. And you could sit behind um, the guys and trade starting in simulation and then hopefully moving to live within uh, a few months. And yeah, so this is the email, right? Perfect. All right. Boom. Um, and when is the start date, Brinkles? February 20th. So get your resumes in as soon as possible so we can go through them. Uh, and yeah. February 20th. Uh, for all those people that are in Toronto, make sure to put the, uh, make sure to send your resume. You uh, put it to the attention of, Bre of Brendan or Wayne, that is the floor manager and the assistant floor manager. We'd love to have you on. And uh, anything else you want to no. add? No, That's thanks it? for having me. Yeah, of course. that was great. Of course, thank you for coming on. All right, oh, guys. Pleasure. Um, yeah, this is one of those times where you get an opportunity to join the floor here to bug the Katina Man. That's exactly how I started on. I was right behind the Katina Man over here, and I started uh, trolling them with, the, with Cowboys comments, right? I'd be like, yeah, Cowboys. And they're like, who is this uh, trainee over here trying to troll us, right? So <laughs> that's how, uh, yeah, that's how I started around here. All right, guys. We've been doing the dance here with 18-1 on the future. Haven't, able, haven't been able to take that key, 18-1-1-0, 18-1-10, essentially. Uh, top, we've been topping out here, even though we broke it earlier. Putting in higher lows, but lower highs as well. So a bit of a compression pattern starting to form here on the future. Uh, we'll see how this one resolves, but you know I'm really disappointed with myself for having called that 18085 reload and not having taken it. I should have been de-risking the majority in the the teens and looking to add back at a better level. That is my mistake there. I should have been more alive to that uh, that potential, but yeah, that's all right. So we'll wait to see which way this resolves. But I don't think I'll be adding on another dip into 18085 if. It dips back into that level. You know, the first time around, I think that would have been the uh, the more appropriate time to punch in. We'll have to wait and see what we get here on the future. But right now, giving up the ghost at 18, one by about five points or so. I was talking to some people there in the chat, and they're like, "Yo, you're not gonna catch me uh, going along the future today at these levels." You know, no foundation. We're talking about rate cuts uh, being kicked down the, uh, to the rest of, or later part of the year. This doesn't make a lot of sense. And, you know, maybe fundamentally you're right, but price action is what it is, and whether you like it or not, it's, it's going to continue to do what it's doing. So might as well participate. All right, let's talk about RNLX. High of day again, and it's halted at the high of day as we speak. The small cap gappers are in vogue today, baby. $2.04. dollars gapped up big. It was halted at a buck seventy. Gapped up, opened at 190, and now we are halted above two bucks. In case you missed the details that I gave you on RNLX, guys, it is just one of many small cap gappers running today. We have four in triple digit territory. This one has a higher float, around 91 and a half million share float, so it's one of the larger ones. But this one did start off the day at around 40 pennies, so that's all right because typically with these uh, sub one dollar stocks they are a little bit higher of a flow to dare. So we'll keep an eye out on the future. We'll keep an eye out on the small cap gappers as it is one hell of a day to be trading today. Oh yeah, and thanks so much to um, both Brankles and The Real Deal Neil Woo! for their um, their insight there. And yeah, definitely come and join us. We have a great time here on the floor and I, I feel like I've learned so much, not only from the people we see in camera, but all the guys in the back as well. Like everyone, super welcoming, especially as someone who had no trading background coming here. Yeah. And I think, yeah, like, you know what? I think it's, it's a really great community, both here in the chat, um, the people on the show, and then everybody you don't see as well. Man. So I just want to shout that and out. And I just, I want you to comment on that a little bit, give people some context about how it was to be, uh, you know, new around here and how kind of we took you in with open arms kind of thing. But I want to tell people Please about do. the 50,000 yeah. level oh. here on BTC. <laughs> We're knocking on the door, Daryl. 49 nine seven two and a quarter essentially we are 
inching into 50,000. Here it comes. I can feel Fabian's vibes right now. He's like, please, just punch at these levels. <laughs> right? Uh, but here, is emanating. <laughs> here comes 50,000, guys. We're, we're blowing up here. on. And there goes 50,000. Shout out to all my BTC people there. Pleased we're at 50,000 on the dot on the day. We haven't broken through that level yet. That is the high of day as we speak. We haven't been up here in a long time. Uh, but all my Bitcoin people probably feel so vindicated. I can't tell you how many friends I have that are constantly posting about Bitcoin on their social media. And they have felt vindicated as hell these past couple of days. So enjoy it while you can, baby. Bitcoin, 50,000, Fabian. It's in. We have an HOD right now. 50,000. What a look on but, Bitcoin. But I want you to add some color about uh, joining the floor here and how oh, yeah. it was and stuff like that. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for giving me the opportunity absolutely. to do so. Yeah, I think really I was a little bit nervous as well because I wasn't really sure of my place. I felt like a little like baby bird like flirting around, flitting around like where am I going, right? Because I was doing a little bit of trading, but also I was initially, you know, hired for, for more of the news position, right? So it kind of fell yes. into trading. But I will say I remember after my first day of trading, I remember Wayne and uh, Yannick and Obi and some of the other guys that being like, you know, how was it? Like, they really were willing to talk to me, and I, I explained my experience, and, you know, they were kind of like, oh, like, that's crazy. You started with small caps, right? So I was kind of learning what the normal things were for trading, and just kind of that there is no normal. Everybody trades really different stuff, and I think even just getting to talk to the guys in the lunchroom, that's something Neil and Sean, and, and you will also talk about sometimes, that right. gives you different color. No two people trade the same. Bang. And I think it was a huge thing for me to learn, and I think it really gave me a sense of how different Every, all the traders are how differently everyone approaches trading and I just I feel really lucky to be here and I think it taught me a, a lot more even as someone who again I didn't really have much of a background but I think being immersed in it something you learn so much faster and I learned about the markets faster this way I learned about trading faster this way and so I'm really grateful also sorry quickly before we yeah, get yeah. Um, to that there yeah. is a super chat or a member a member chat uh, from Broad Street Wolf fantabulous name member for 39 months sorry this was a bit older but I just saw this one now what do you think about long term Bitcoin ETF? Yeah. I mean, I think for one, uh, Bitcoin can be kind of volatile, right? So yep. we would be we would be scotch cautious, right? It does move like like crazy. And I think too, it depends on what ETF you want to use as well, right? Because there are the different Bitcoin ETFs. You didn't. I, I'll just pull up iBit, or because uh, I know iBit was one of the. Um, I don't know what the. What is this? The Nizi, the NQ? Sorry, IBIT. Yeah. Um, it's not on dot AM. No, it's not. Okay, let me look for you here. Oh, it's on the NQ. I okay. Found it. Sorry. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, let, we'll look at like wider trade. I think the thing is too, is with all these crypto stocks, they're really at the whim of Bitcoin. I mean, IBIT definitely a bit of a rounded bottom here, but it also, it, it's fairly newer, right? So I would exactly. say maybe again, not advice, just my take on the chart because these uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs are so much newer. Uh, I would probably wait to kind of see how they move and then see which one tickles your fancy the most to use a <laughs> Sharifism and then I would get involved. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to be honest. It's really hard to kind of analyze crypto charts for me just because they do tend to move at the whim of Bitcoin. Yeah. All right, Adara, it is time to restart that lesson. And we are talking about accumulation and distribution today. Uh, very important topic for day trading, for swing trading. So make sure you tune in as uh, we talk about the details. So let's start here, Ram Ram. Um, so imagine you're at a buffet and you see people piling plates high with delicious food. That's essentially accumulation. People are people like the food, right? So it's like, um, I don't know, we have a restaurant around here called Mandarin, even though the Katina man, he, he says, you know, it's not the best quality. I happen to like it. I'm piling on my plate. So that's a, a reflection on me that I like the food. Or are they leaving half-eaten dishes uh, at, at the table? So you, maybe you, you like the visually, you like the food, but you didn't actually like the way it tastes, so you end up leaving it. That's essentially distribution. Distribution. In day trading, it's the same principles essentially. But instead of food, we're watching price action and we're watching volume. Those are the two things here that we want when we talk about accumulation. That's the main focus. Um, that's what you know. The accumulation, the distribution um, reflects in price and volume, which is reflecting what the big players are doing in the markets. All right. So let's talk a little bit about candlestick clues. Because that, how do we find clues about accumulation and distribution? You can see them in candlestick patterns as well as chart patterns. The first here that I want to talk about, one second, is, no, that's not the one right there. There we go. The bullish and bullish accumulation. So now we're going to talk about bullish accumulation, and then we're talking about bearish distribution. So bullish accumulation, one thing we can keep an eye on is an engulfing pattern. So we're looking for long green candles that 
completely engulf smaller red candles. This is indicating that buyers are overwhelming sellers and potentially pushing prices higher. This is the kind of the thing we're looking for over here when we look for bullish engulfing candles. This is the candlestick pattern we're looking for. A red candle being completely engulfed by a subsequent green candle that shows you that buyers are overwhelming sellers. The other thing we're looking for are hammer candles. So a hammer shaped candle that forms at a support level specifically. We're looking for it to appear at key areas of support. And what you're looking for here is a small body, a long lower shadow, and a short upper shadow. This is suggesting that buying pressure um, is taking place despite temporary dip, often again near a support level. And this is the kind of candle we're looking for here, right? Where we preceded by a downtrend, the price has made a new low, but then the buyer said, mm, nah, that's enough of that. And then they push it back up, and then what follows is an uptrend, a subsequent uptrend, okay? So you're looking for this type of candle over here. And you'll see the day prior to it, you could tell the bulls were trying to push it back up because you also had another hammer candle over here, all right? The other thing we can look for are dojis with long lower shadows. So a doji which has an equal open and close. Uh, in this case, you're look, looking for a long lower shadow indicating that buying interest is overcoming selling pressure despite the initial indecisiveness in the market. And this is reflected by the small body. So this is the kind of the candle we're looking for over here, right? A long lower shadow, a tiny body, and a small upper shadow. And again, it's preceded by a downtrend and proceeded usually by an eventual uptrend. It doesn't have to be immediate, but eventually it does uptrend. And a rising wedge. Price trends upwards within a narrowing channel. I'll show you what I mean in a second. This is suggesting accumulation before the potential breakout of the wedge. Uh, look for increasing volume within the wedge for continuation. This is what we're looking for here, this kind of pattern, a series of higher lows, higher highs, and basically we're looking for the breaking of this uh, upper trend line on above average volume. So you're eventually looking for the break through this upper trend line, maybe even gapping above it, but what you're looking for is above average volume there. So those are the bullish accumulation patterns. Let me just go back over here. Now let's talk about some bearish distribution, Adara. Um, so bearish distribution, almost the exact same thing as bullish accumulation, just on the inverse. So when we're talking about a uh, reverse or a bearish engulfing pattern, what we're talking about is a long red candle that completely engulfs a smaller green candle. Uh, and basically here it's signifying sellers are overwhelming buyers and potentially pushing the prices lower. And this is what we're looking for here. A green candle, a smaller green candle engulfed entirely by a subsequent red candle. That is showing some distribution taking place. The hanging man pattern, remember this one from uh, our uh, week on candlestick patterns? So a, hand, a hanging man shaped candlestick forms ideally at a resistance level. And typically it has a small body, a long upper shadow, and a lower and a small lower shadow. And it's suggesting that the pressure is emerging despite a temporary rise, again, often near resistance level. And this is kind of what the candle we're looking for here is this bad boy right there at a key resistance level. And it's preceded typically by an uptrend and proceeded by, you guessed it, a downtrend. All right, and then the next bad boy on there is the doge. The doji with a long upper shadow. So a doji uh, with a long upper shadow is indicating selling pressure, overcoming buyer, buying interest, despite indecisiveness reflected in the small body. And this is the candle we're looking for over here. So this is the bad boy we're looking, no, sorry, this is one over here. So again, preceded by an uptrend, long upper shadow, small body, short lower shadow, and then we have a subsequent downtrend after that. And then the falling wedge, very important as well. This is another indicator, an indicator of a distribution. So you're looking for a price downtrend within a narrowing channel, which suggests obviously that distribution is taking place before the eventual breakdown of that downtrend line. Look for decreasing volume within the wedge as a confirmation indicator. And this is what we're looking for here, lower highs, lower lows, and you're looking for the eventual breakdown of the downtrend line um, and look for decreasing volume within the wedge. So you're looking for the downtrend to have lower volume, lower volume shows decreasing interest and therefore less likely to be bought up once it drops below that trend line. 
questions or comments, Adara. Yeah, <laughs> one thing too that I like is um, uh, the whole idea on that, that first slide too talks about mini market stories being told by the candles and the patterns. And what I oh, think yes. is key there too is it's exactly that, a story. The candle is one character in the larger story the market's telling you, right? So I would say, look at the candles, but also look at what else is happening in the market, Bang. right? And I really appreciate it being worded like that. So that's just why yep. I wanted to touch on that. And again, also too, um, on the flip side of that, it's really, it's an example of contextualizing these candles we're talking about, right? Like, you know, like we had all those those candles. We talked about gaps as well. And it's really about how both in the longer term for, in terms of gaps, if you're talking like days, months, et cetera, that's where the gaps can really come into oh, yeah. play. But the shorter terms in terms of some of these candle patterns and these uh, wedges, these bull flags, bear flags, et cetera, what have you, it can really tell you a general picture um, of accumulation and distribution. And that's why I appreciate it. You use the word story because I think it's all these little teeny tiny pieces of, of a, a a market chess game being played, and I think well it can said. really help you. Thank you. Um, it. All right, so we talked about the two things we're looking at for accumulation and distribution. We said it was price and volume. So let's talk a little bit about volume now. We're gonna we're gonna become the volume whisperer here for a little bit, guys. All right, volume plays a crucial role in ID accumulation and distribution patterns. It's like the secret language whispered by the market, revealing the true intentions behind price movements. Here's how to decipher its messages. So the first one, we're talking about the volume and price relationship. So when you see increasing volume with rising prices, a very good indicator of accumulation. So what we're looking for here are big players entering the market, pushing prices up and driving volume higher. Think of this as a bidding war attracting more participants, okay? So higher prices with higher volume, typically an indication of accumulation. Decreasing volume with falling prices. Conversely, this is suggestive of distribution. So sellers are unloading their shares, causing the prices to dip, but decreasing interest is reflected, excuse me, is reflected in the lower volume. Imagine the buffet losing its allure as plates get empty. That's essentially it there, okay? So lower, lower uh, prices, lower volume shows in decreasing interest and de decreasing interest is more suggestive that there will be less buyers below at that level. And then sudden volume spikes, super important because they're usually indicative of catalysts that are coming in and surprising the market. These can amplify the existing message, whether it was bullish or bearish. A spike accompanying a price rise implies strong buying pressure when a spike during, the, when a, spike during a decline is suggestive of aggressive selling. So it works both ways. So keep your eye on these volume indicators, Adara. And then there's also volume comparisons. So remember how we've been talking a lot about, you know, looking when we did the week on gaps, we said, well, look at the volume accompanying the gap up, right? And you have to compare it to the previous uh, gaps volume. Is it like double the, the amount of volume on the previous gap? If it is, it may be suggestive of something else. So you're looking for above average volume. So compare the volume today to recent averages. The higher average volume on the uptick strengthens the accumulation signal, and similarly, the lower than average volume during a decline reinforces the theory of distribution in these particular instances. And um, compare volume across different price levels, so observe if volume increases significantly at support levels, which could be a potential buying opportunity, or uh, at resistance levels, which means a potential for selling Adara. So, and then one last thing here, Context matters, guys, because you have to know the uh, context in which you're trading. You have to look and see, are there news events that are causing this thing to pump? Or are we on an earnings play? So the reason that matters is because, well, if the earnings was a beat, you know, analysts could have a, uh, you know, uh, what, what do they call that? A, a financial model for the beat. So they'd be like, okay, if, if earnings come in at X, Y, and Z, here's the model. So they already have a predictive uh, model for the earnings beat. However, when there's a news catalyst that the market didn't expect, that could send things haywire because nobody modeled for that particular news context, okay? So these ones are typically a bit more bullish, news and events. And then there's also support and resistance. Are the prices support, support sorry, ap approaching known support, which is a potential buying zone, or are they approaching a key resistance level, which is obviously a distribution opportunity? And then the market trend, keep your eye on the market trend because if you've been trying to get short 
a lot of these Meg 7 names or the chips thinking that they've been extended lately, well, have a look at what the market's been doing since the end of October, since the early November. It's been up and to the right. So even if the name is weak, it's really been buoyed by the overall market trend and you need to know what context you're trading in and that is not in isolation to the particular name, but into the overall market sentiment, Adair. Yeah, can I say one thing as well on that? Absolutely. So with regards to the, the news and events, could you flip that and say the same for distribution or no absolutely. because you need lower volume for No, you're okay. absolutely right. I would agree with you. So if a bearish catalyst came in place, for example, if we uh, we heard uh, you know something like Elon Musk obviously is getting rinsed every day in the news, right? Something bearish comes in for Tesla beyond the norm that we, we see every day, you know, that could send this thing plummeting. So yeah. absolutely, because you haven't modeled for that particular news cat okay, like catalyst, that. right? So it's anything that the market's not prepared for because I was thinking another example could have been Boeing because that I know that was Perfect a massive example yeah so I just saw, I was thinking thank you I appreciate that because yeah. I saw that in that that was one thing when I saw in the PowerPoint I was like curious I was like oh that's a better um, example than Tesla thank you but yeah. I mean thank you I appreciate that although t you are right in that Tesla often will have some news that is <laughs> often bearish so it depends on how bearish it's going to be but yeah no I appreciate yeah, that yeah every day people taking shots at Elon there was an SEC thing this week and he and apparently he's he's providing the Russians with Starlink it's never ending all right Confirmation is king though, Adara, so we need to look at confirmation, very important as well. So in this particular in instance, we're looking for technical tools to help confirm our theory, our thesis here. Whether we're, uh, you know, whether we're experiencing accumulation or distribution, we need to employ uh, indicators like RSI, on bonds volume, moving average convergence divergence, money flow index, the momentum index, there is uh, umpteen amount of different indicators that could help uh, confirm or reject their theory. Make sure to apprise yourself of those. And chart patterns, this is my fave. Look for complementary patterns to support your, uh, execu uh, your accumulation and distribution theory. Right, so are you seeing a head and shoulders? Are you seeing an inverse head and shoulders? Uh, are you seeing triangles, descending wedges, in, uh, ascending wedges? Whatever your theory is, look for other indicators, not just technical indicators, but other signs that your theory is, uh, is with merit. So that is basically all I have to say about that. And we will do that lesson again in a little bit, Adara. All right, let me look at my futures position here. All right, so we did dip down on the future and we held that lower end of the range. So we are decidedly below 11.1. We didn't quite make it down into um, that 50 point level, which was at 18.050. Now, now VWAP is at 18.055. That was kind of the level that I was looking for us to hit VWAP, but we come into that 18.070 and we have a couple of uh, buying candles here. We are at the we just came into this key resistance level though, which is 18084. So we troughed out there initially. Now we're, looks like we're topping out here. So let's see what the future does. Awfully bearish though, ever since breaking through that 18120. I think we got up to, uh, yeah, 120, 121. It's been sequentially lower lows, lower highs on this bad boy. So we'll see if that trend ends or we continue to melt down on the future. All right. Let's have a look at some other small cap gappers. Anything happening here? RNLX halted down and BOF, a new one. Oh my goodness, we have a new, a new small cap gapper, BOF Adara Branch Out Food. Let's halted at $2.79 up 102.5%. So the small cap gappers in triple digit territory continue to increase. Let's see what this one's gonna do. It's sparse on volume though, guys. Only about 363,000 shares traded on the day. It's a $2 name, so be careful. Yeah, of course it's a halter too, because it's all gonna be, they're all gonna be part of the same wild, chaotic party, because <laughs> why not? As you said, these small, pat, these small cap gappers tend to travel in groups. Um, and right now they're just kind of going from, they're taking turns running up, you know what I mean? Clearly. Often at the same time, but I mean, congrats to them. Congrats to anybody, in all seriousness, congrats to anyone who did well off those moves, because uh, felicitation to you, hats off. I'm in a trade right now, and I'm a little bit nervous about said trade, but I did, I will say the confirmation for this was better than it was for the other times I was involved in this name, with the exception of that most recent long, which I'm pretty proud of. Basically, why I got long here was I tried to go short here. It was looking okay for half a second, then it failed. I accidentally added in trying to get out, so the fat finger vibes continue to be omnipresent in my life today, but then, you know, we had this trade back here. I watched this test view up. I watched this bounce off of view up. I watched how we held 
through this area just above 734. So basically, I took a long here to 734, part out at 736, the other part out at 737. Please just punch about how this went down. Then I watched just, and I wanted, I did not want to be too hasty on this uh, re-entry for the short. I watched this fail 737 a couple times. Like we, we got above and then we kind of wake back down. So I'm staying here. I'm going to watch what we do at 738. That would be my point of exit. But I honestly, I feel comfortable with the short right now. I do not want to add to this position. It's of, it's not like huge, but it's sizable enough. I can kind of piece it out on the way down. I am absolutely going to be out by the time we get to that VWAP area. 733, we bounce with the viciousness. I do not want to mess with NVIDIA 733. No, no way. Um, I have to be really honest there. But yeah, I mean, I think this is too an example of I think earlier in my trading journey, if I had a bad experience with a name, I would just avoid it for the rest of the day. And I mean, to be clear, I'm not gonna say a lot of these trades were, were perfect. Like here, I thought we saw something in the book. Clearly I didn't. We flushed like mad. And then, you know, the short, I just timed it out. It was a bit too early, right? But I think, you know, then we tried to learn from these with these last two trades. And I, I feel confident with my entry on this last trade, certainly confident with how the long went. And I think really, what I've learned is just kind of perseverance, right? Don't necessarily say no to a name just because you messed up with it before. If it gives you an opportunity, take that opportunity. So I think in that case, that's what I tried to do with NVIDIA. We'll see if that ends up being fruitful, but that is the look here. Um, yeah, pretty happy with what's happening here. Um, let's see what else is going on. Ooh, okay, Tesla. Hello. I haven't, you know, Tesla, I haven't given Tesla much love except for when I tried to get into that short way too early earlier today. This could be another short here, just like a range to that 188, 20 area. But the thing is, you know, as much as, as Sharif was saying, the media loves getting up on Elon. We'll have to see how much uh, pressure Elon and Tesla can actually take. Yeah. Uh, pressure law that didn't work. Press law, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, Tesla's pretty depressed law on the day as it is. We are down 2.5%. And this candle does make me a bit nervous. This looks a little bit dragonfly ish. Uh, this little doji here. Mm. So we're going to have to see um, how this goes. But this doji looks like it wants to maybe shake things oh, up a little bit. Sh so I do not want to get in her way. But I, yeah, I think NVIDIA, I'm happy with the NVIDIA short right now. Although I'm very cautious of the NVIDIA short to be clear, to be very clear. But the fact that we keep failing to decisively break above that 737. Huh, huh, I'll just say huh. <laughs> also Google. Hi, Google. I haven't looked at you in a while. I don't give Google enough love. Google, though, is interesting because we're kind of, I think the three minutes a little bit clearer what I saw that made me interested. But we had this top and turn at that 488. Uh, oh, my God. Google 488. 148.85. Then coming back to reject on this 148.85. This could be a short. Uh, we, we're literally not even positive on the day. We're down on the day. To me, this is maybe even a clearer short than the potentially dicey NVIDIA situation in which I am currently ensconced. So I'm going to be really cognizant here. I want to see a little bit more proof here because that's why I felt comfortable entering NVIDIA, right? I watched that failure a couple times. I would like another red candle, and then I will take this short, uh, probably taking some out around on the way down and at least to VWAP, being scalpy, no. being careful, and then just seeing what occurs from here on out. Um, Ink Me T's company saying Tesla dump and sucks for the day. Yeah, I mean, Tesla on the day is a little bit. Oh, wrong. yeah. Yeah, for sure. As I said, a bit. Can I Tesla. mention something about Please Tesla? Do. yeah. Because uh, it's respecting pivots today, Adara, for whatever reason. So let's talk a little bit about this because on the way down. So it, you look, we opened up above the pivot. So this was bamboozlement because typically if you open above pivots, you're looking for a bullish move. And initially you got one. We popped into 194.73, but that was all she wrote on that bad boy. And then we came down to resistance level one, which is the red dotted line. That held up initially. So you see that troughing out here. And then we move like a couple of bucks off that level. We reject a little bit below VWAP. And now we've got this really good looking uh, hammer candle bouncing off, you guessed it, resistance level two on pivots, which is 187.70 right now. So it's moving back into 189. You're not gonna catch me you know, punching uh, you know, aggressively long here because this is a counter trend trade and that's not my style. But if you are a counter trend trader, this 189 move possibly into 190 and two thirds uh, previous level of uh, support looking to possibly be resistance here on Tesla. That would be a nice little trade. So V-shaped recovery, maybe rejecting off 190, 190 and a quarter, 190 and a half in and around that area on TSLA. But yeah, down it goes again. Uh, I have a trade, I have a, a resting, um, order in my personal account on Tesla at 175. That still hasn't been triggered. So I'm still upset about that because we came very close to triggering that last week, but alas, it was not to be. All right, let's uh, look at what else is moving over here. 
it's been very light trading for me today on these um, these uh, Mag 7 names. Uh, Remember if I can show the chart? Um, haven't traded any of these, but Meta's looking awfully good today. It looks like it is basing out at that 476 area for whatever reason. Look at how many candles are bouncing off that 476, 475 ish, but it is lower highs, a smidge above that 475 low that we had originally. Higher highs uh, for Meta. We still haven't put in any lower lows, so the trend is still intact. I mean, personally, what I'd be looking for here on Meta is a dip into view up. So around 475, 475 and a half and I'd be looking possibly to get in there. You had an original dip trade on Meta at VWAP at around 473, but that was much earlier in the day at 1015. So Meta continues to look good on the day. Obviously, NVIDIA looking good as well. And you had a very similar trade there on NVDA. That 733 dip would have given you a $4 winner as we double bottomed, you guessed it, at VWAP at around 733, and we popped up into that 737 and a half. So NVIDIA putting in lower highs, definitely, and lower lows, but de getting that VWAP bounce at least once. We'll see if it gets it a second time. And now the market is heading lower as, you know, the chips are starting to get a little weak here, especially NVIDIA. Maybe if this breaks at uh, 732 and a half, we'll be looking short the market at that point. NVIDIA definitely, and the chips, uh, responsible for this move up. It's certainly not Apple. It's certainly not Amazon or Tesla or Google for that matter or Microsoft. They're all red on the day. Meta and Nvidia, the only two Meg 7 names on my chart that are green anyway. So the future is up 0.2. It's definitely not for the from these other five, but rather from these two. All right, let's have a look at the small cap gappers as well because we've been talking about those all day, Adira. BMR continuing to hang around in 1,000% world, baby. Actually? Yes, it's above VWAP decidedly. It's coming into that $25 level again, holding that 20 period moving average for whatever reason. All the closing prints, despite some wicks here, are all above the 20 period, which is the yellow line on my chart. Good look here for this bad boy as it looks to curl back up. Let's see what it does at that 25. Does it give up the ghost or what? So BMR in four, 400 or sorry, 1000% world today. RNLX. Th two halts down? Is that three? One, two. No, two halts down for our RNLX off that 240 high. It's still putting in higher lows, though. That's the thing. So we, we troughed off originally at a buck 30. We're still at a buck 75. So the RNLX trade may not be done as it's still up 364%. The other one, MGIH, this bad boy is still up 563%. The 957 top, it also is holding the 20 period for whatever. These algos are gunning for the 20 period today. Uh, I don't know why, but anyway, a couple of dips into that six where the 20 period was. Again, it's a yellow line on my chart looking to take seven again. M-G-I-H up 570 some odd percent. And then people were yelling about N-A. This one joined the triple digit club, but it's much lightly <laughs> traded and it's shooting up as I speak. Look how wild this one is trading. Uh, it's trading like 20 pennies at a time here on a $3 name. That should give you an indication of the spread. I don't even need to look at the level two. I just see how it trades and I can know it's spready. It's trying to break four. It has a 475 high, but it is dancing with VWAP at the moment. And guess what? It also bounced off the 20. I'm surprised. NA, uh, so many small gap gappers today, baby. It's been hard to look at some of these big cap names, like SMCI is up over 7%. What? Broke 800, went to 810. We didn't even mention that. CLSK, uh, Clean Spark up 14% with Mara and the other names. I mean, there's just been so many names to mention today, Derek. Yeah, as you could tell, I was sorry. I just kept laughing there as Sharif was naming all those small caps. And isn't it crazy? I love when, too, when this happens at the big desk, when I go to shows that something's moving and then it gets a giant pop right when it comes to you. It always mm -hmm. feels so like, here we go. It's very momentous. <laughs> and that's certainly what happened with that NA there. Oh, my Dang. goodness. Yeah, no, that was, I was just like making stunned, shocked faces there. And, you know, I, I do, I enjoy the Sharif small cap narration. I know someone in the chat was saying stock Chenier's at some point. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> shout out to you. Um, also, yeah, someone was asking in the chat, am I yep. still in, uh, am I still paper trading? Yes, I am. I am still in the sim. I think the thing is, too, I would like to go live. The thing is, though, these last couple weeks have been very rough for me trading-wise. I'm going to be really honest. We had one green day all of last week. And 
and today it looks like we are going to be um, a skosh red. I'm going to just be really honest. So that's kind of where we're at on that journey because I think, you know, how to trade accountability, good times. But I do have an NVIDIA trade I would love to discuss in okay. a moment because I want to talk about this Hayes Record Super okay. Chat. Thank you so much. 199. Check out Figs PA today, fam. Getting a swing position. Gorilla emoji. Let's look at Figs. Um, oh, it must be NY. Yeah, thank you so much for the super chat. The Hayes records there. Hayes. Figs. Um, it's on the Nazi. Oh, so yeah, I, I just found the chart. Um, oh yeah, the, it's just called Figs. Okay, I was trying to find yep. the proper name so I could refer to it nicely. Um, oh, okay. Hello, Figs. I have to say the Hayes records. I love this support area of this 590. Like, whoo, because we come down there earlier this November 9th area, we chop and churn, then we get a nice little swoop back up. We come down and more or less with, you know, a bit of a dip into 570, notwithstanding, we hold that 590 and guess what? We curl back up. I would be very cognizant of this 680 area. And I say that because that was that pop we had earlier before falling into that beautiful 590. But also that was where we had that nice, uh, beautiful move up uh, on December 1st. So I think, you know, that level would be really key, especially as we're kind of about... 40 pennies away from it. I think this is a really good look. And we're going to have, you know, from there, again, just previous areas. Of, you guys know what I like when I read charts. Previous areas of resistance are going to be of note to me. Thanks. But yeah, thank you so much, the Hayes Records, for that chat. Uh, hey, the Hayes Records saying, telling you, homegirl. Yeah, I see. I really see what you mean here. That 590 of support uh, cannot be scoffed at. And I will certainly not be scoffing at it. And yeah, I think, I think it's a nice look. What is this? Direct-to-consumer healthcare apparel and lifestyle brand. Company offers apparel and products for healthcare professionals. Interesting. The company markets and sells its products to approximately 14 countries directly. Nice. So direct-to-consumer stuff. Its offerings include scrubware, non-scrubware -scrub such as lab coats, underscrubs, outerwear, loungewear, compression socks. I like that it has all the stuff they offer. Hold on. <gasps> Interesting. Ram Ram telling me there's like a scrub like trend happening. They're called cute scrubs or something like that. Where you, where, say that again, Ram? Sorry. So she's like, they're not called cute scrub, but the figs, they got more pockets. So this, this particular one is trending, Ram Ram? Like, okay. So anyway, scrubs are trending right now and they're like, you know, a little bit cuter according to her. Uh, then the regular scrubs and it's a thing. So this is maybe why it's running now up 5% It's a, been a good look on the chart. I didn't know that that was a, a trend at the moment I, I'm old man, right old man hands, right? So I, I don't really know what's popping off with these trends, but um, the Hayes record says my wife works in the healthcare and everyone's uses figs Okay, I should ask some of the, the people at uh, my work what uh, they're wearing because we don't order that kind of stuff All the doctors are responsible for that. So thank you for letting me uh, know that that is uh, very good to know. Yeah, all right, let's, um, let's look at some other stuff over here, Adara. I'm looking in small crap world. Nothing really happening at the moment. We're not getting any decided breakouts, but what we are doing is we're inching back closer again, Adara, to 18.1 on the future. So we did descend momentarily into 18.070, but right back in we go. Now, do we break 18.1 this time? I mean, we had trouble with 18.1 originally. We had a decided break early on into 18.121, but now we're, you know, we obviously had trouble with 18.110 during this period over here, and now we're moving right back up into 18.1. Something tells me we could have trouble with 18.1. Uh, with these lower highs and lower lows that we've been putting in essentially since around uh, 1130 or so. So keeping an eye on that. I'm trying to figure out another trade to get into other than the futures here. But nothing is to my liking at the moment. Um, what I am looking at though is this NVIDIA descent back into VWAP. So it originally bounced off VWAP 733 and a quarter is the level I'm looking at here on NVDA. And I'll be looking for it to hold up here. Because if NVIDIA gives up the ghost and starts really breaking down, I think the futures could absolutely tank because we're not having uh, a lot of participation here from the MAG7 names on the future. So if we don't, and the ones that are actually doing well end up tanking, well, that could be in the end of the futures trade for me. So 733 and a quarter here on NVDA. If it comes back in to VWAP again, I may uh, be looking to get in a small position here just to participate in this name, but uh, it's on its way down with you know, sequentially lower highs off that 7.46, and now we're in 7.34.
so we're well off the highs here, despite the fact that we're still up 1.84 on the day. So we really haven't given up the ghost ghost here. Uh, Mr. Long Shorts, Palantir may be trying to curl. Ooh. All right, well, you don't have to tell me twice. Let me look at PLTR over here, PLTR. Shout out to the Katina man who's always trading Palantir and he's got the Palantir hat. All right, so it's a good look on Palantir on the day. We were above Friday's highs. Uh, let's look at what percentage we're up. 2.95%. We were up higher. That 25.50 did reject, though, and now we're doing the dance with 25. Looks like 25 is holding up, and the 20 period, yet again, for whatever reason, is holding up on the day on the five-minute chart anyway. But what I don't like about Palantir is the sequentially lower highs that we're putting in, but we are starting to curl. So the... the the lows are starting to incrementally get a little bit higher and higher. So if we curl up here, that would be a good look. And I think that's what you were saying anyway, Mr. Long Shorts. You were saying it was trying to curl. So that makes sense to me. Let's keep an eye on it. Let's not guess. Let's wait for it to curl and maybe we'll participate in it. Uh, Manuel Palma, Disney, back to VWAP. Let me have a look at Diz. All right, another good name on the day. You saw the big kahunas. Say that again, Katina Man. I reshorted up. So the Katina Man is short again on arm. All right, so keep an eye out on the... He's using 145 as a top on arm to look to get short. So arm is doing the dance right now with 140. Keep your eye out on arm. The Katina Man is short again on ARM. Uh, but Disney here, guys, it is coming into VWAP. So that $110 level is uh, in confluence right now with VWAP. As we come right back down and hold that level, let's see what we get right now on Disney but it's been a good few days ever since earnings here on Diz as we hold up above 100 bucks. Yeah, I mean, what a, so many names to, to get involved in. There's been so much movement. Um, and eh. yeah, indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, also, yeah, thank you to, I think, Rock Doc saying, and the, yeah, I appreciate the support with the, um, you know, as I, as I learned to trade, always much appreciated. And I would like to go live sometime soon, so hopefully there will be a scotch more consistency because I just want to, you know, be a little comfier. Also... I got short meta, but I want to explain my reasoning. So this is a pattern that I would like to patent that I call the umbrella handle. Now, I would call it the malevolent cousin of the cup and, <laughs> uh, of the, the rounded bottom, of the, of the smiley face. I so where the it. smiley face signifies a long on the horizon, the umbrella handle, you've got a big move long, <laughs> then a security recovery, and then you've got another red candle warning you, hey, there's going to be more downside, a little bit more rain, get your umbrella out. Also, okay. it looks like an umbrella handle. So, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. you know, we'll have Very to cool. call the, the CMTs to put this in the books. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's just my little term. But, yeah, and then where you put your stops or your exits for the umbrella handle, uh, umbrella handle pattern are where the handle, where the top of the handle is. So if we get above that uh, 476, 70, 7, 476, 80, I'm going to have to say sayonara. And if not, where I plan my profit is where we had the next little low. So basically, we're going to try to take about 50 cents on this guy where we had the bottom of that earlier trough. Also, I learned about the umbrella handle pattern when it, it got me good when I tried to uh, go long AMD because I thought this was a roundy uh, face recovery. Actually, it was an umbrella handle trying to trip me up. So uh. I learned a hard lesson from that. Again, not every pattern is going to manifest the way you think it will. Oh. But I saw this, and I, my initial instinct was to go long, and then I said, Adara, remember, remember your AM destiny. Remember that horrible train and what you learned from it and that little umbrella handle. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Also, I want to talk about my NVIDIA trade um, because I do agree with what you said about VWAP. VWAP and NVIDIA has been nuts. Yeah. Like, that's how I just got this long off year, pieced it out. We got to the EMA. I got short again after looking for some confluence and then just kind of pieced it back on the way down. Thank you. Appreciate that. But yeah, this you nine EMA, see, pardon? You said confluence. Oh, that's why I can't didn't hit, know. It cannot hit the bang. You said Thank confluence. you. <laughs> I didn't even realize it said confluence. <laughs> Obi's just like always, he's omnipresent. He's yeah, like, yeah, he is. He is, right? I love it. But yeah, no. So um, I think even one time, so we said confluence or confluent off um, before we went live, and then Sharif hit the bang button, and then the music that we played at the beginning went off. I remember bang. that was a whole kerfuffle. But yeah, um, good times, and I was really happy with this with this trade here uh, on Nvidia. I'm gonna be more cognizant now of getting back involved in this because this range is getting tighter and tighter. Right now, just eyeing the Meta short. We're gonna see what Meta wants to do there. But yeah, my my new offering to the CMT world, the umbrella handle pattern. <laughs> we'll see if it sticks. Um, yeah. I just want to mention BMR guys, it's starting to curl up again. Shout out to Scott H for pointing that out to me. Here we go again. It is putting that smiley face pattern. Shout out to the NOS boss and his crew over there at Trade Ideas. We're on our way, it looks like the 30. 
earmark 35 bucks, 34.94 HOD on this monster, but we're gonna incrementally have to get up there before we see 35 bucks again. Keep your eye out on the $10 level at 30, whether or not we continue to uh, pump up from there. Now, um, Hussam, uh, Hussam Dahager wants me to look at AMD, and he's saying it is, I believe he said at the top end of the range, he says, AMD is at resistance of the downtrend. Can you check up, please? Sure. You're so nice there using the please word. Absolutely. How could I say no to that? Let's check our friend AMD. All right, AMD up two and two thirds percent today. Look, Sam, there is really nothing to do here but buy the dips. It has been up and to the right. It has been holding that 20 period quite well and it's been holding it all day, right? So. Um, you're not going to see me trying to guess tops here on AMD, but I do have this 177 level um, charted from before. That typically means it was a closing print. Uh, this is not even a pattern. This is an upward channel, right? There's really nothing to do but to get long on the downward part or the, the lower, the lower uh, trend line here. Okay, Because it's been trending up and bouncing off either the 20 period or the, the bottom trend line. Do we have, let's just check the 30 minute here to see where we could encounter resistance. Okay, so this 179 level was a bit of a top on February 2nd, and is, it's where we actually opened up as well on February 5th, right? So the Friday to Monday look, 179 incoming. That 180 level hasn't featured all that much, but it is obviously psychological resistance being the $10 area. All time highs goes to this area over here back on the 25th of January, 185 essentially, or just thereabouts. So I'm gonna say we gotta break through this top end of the range over here at 179 to really get going, but we're still well off at 177.40. So that is potential upside um, on AMD. Let's see what it does at 178, obviously, before we start looking at 179, but yeah. Uh, shout out to you, good call on that. The chips are awfully strong, as you've seen. Uh, on the day. Uh, let me have a look at the futures here. All right, so now we are above 18.1 again, right? But we're still not above this range that we uh, topped out at earlier in the, in the show. So I'm gonna be watching intently here to see if 18.110, whether we can get that level on a closing basis. It's been nice recovery here after that give up on 18.1. We still have an 18.121 HOD. Uh, with which to contend, but we are pumping up again here on the Fuge, uh, 18.105. Let's pack our patience to see if we can break that high a day. I've been holding this essentially since the beginning of the show, and there's no point in getting it out now. Yeah, congrats to you. That's a fabulous, uh, fabulous position, fabulous look. And I mean, packing your patience, that's the big thing I have to learn. And I feel like one thing you do really well is just being patient in the trade. Something I am very much working on, something I'm trying to do here with my meta uh, umbrella handle. I love that here. pattern. That's hilarious. Thank you. It's well, not even hilarious. It's accurate. They, right? It I mean, we're going to have to put some handle. data analysis behind yeah. that to see if of it's course. legit. But the fact, you know, you can't go wrong with a name like the umbrella handle pattern. Thank you. Know? you. Come on. Thank you. And I mean, it's like it, 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 mm -hmm. it right now it's coming to fruition. We have not gotten above <laughs> the, the top of the handle. So I, I'm pretty happy here, I do have to say. But, um, oh, I accidentally deleted my little beak wetter here. So we're going to oh. have to fix it. We're gonna have to write that immediately. But yeah, so um, we're almost time for the next lesson. Yes, so, ma'am. Very exciting times. But yeah, I think, uh, thank you to Smoke Divine showing some support in the chat. Yeah, I have no <laughs> intentions of giving up. I'm really liking trading, trying to get better every day. Look at Neil. Uh, Ella, Ella, A, A, A. Thank of you course, very much. Of course, of course. Because obviously Rihanna umbrella, right? Yes, and yeah, and I mean, uh, it's certainly hopefully raining and pouring for the shorts over here. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you can you can stand under this umbrella. We'll see we'll see if the umbrella holds up. But right now, doing okay. Did you watch a halftime show yesterday with Usher? No, Didn't I didn't. It? What did he do? No, no, uh, nothing. I mean, he was just he was doing his thing. But yeah. I was gonna ask you if you watched that to compare it to Rihanna last year. Yeah, Rihanna was crazy good. Yeah, yeah, I know Kendrick Lamar, I enjoyed his little cameo when they did the big rap uh, mm. halftime show. That oh, was yeah. a really okay. good one as well, yeah. You know what else good. happened over the weekend, um, Adara? Arsenal won 6 0. Shout out to Adam DeLuce in the chat. I saw you there, Adam, earlier shouting out uh, Arsenal 6 0 ski, baby. Uh, now tied with City on points, but one game behind, obviously. Liverpool still six ahead of us. 6 0. 6 0 was a thrashing of West Ham. Um, 
on their own turf too. We beat them up on their own turf. It was pretty bad. Can you believe the majority of fans left at halftime? The camera was just getting them leaving. Actually? People were just, yeah, yeah, they were just like, and they booed them at halftime. When they got off the field, the crowd started booing. They got, they got shellacked. Yeah. Katina Mann. Was it kind of like when it was, uh, that was Yeah, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> the Katina Mann is like, was it like kind of like the shellacking the Cowboys took during uh, their beating or uh, the, the beating that uh, the, they gave the Cowboys? At the hand of the Packers, at the hand, all right, Katina, man, your point, your point is made. <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, thankfully, I have something that, uh, other than the Cowboys to hang my hat on, Darren. That's uh, the Arsenal. Shout out, Adam. I see you, baby. I see you times six. Yeah, no, I mean, I think this is this is crazy. Yeah, a couple things I want to shout out to like Bears versus Bulls with the umbrella emoji. Um, Kevin Mendoza saying, pamp it up. We must pamp it up. So we will, I'm going to show up, we will still pamp it, uh, Kevin, for you and Sharif and the people in Longs here. Um, wet the umbrella beak, says Rahelio. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I mean, what, what a time here. Um, this has been... What a market. And also, yeah, 6 nil is crazy. I mean, like I've said, what I know about Premier League is pretty much entirely from the show Ted Lasso um, on Apple. But based on that, you know, that tells me that's 6 nil is hard. That's, a, that's impressive there for Arsenal. Also, Meta breaking that bottom. And so I am pleased as punch. Uh, we're going to hopefully let this continue uh, to, to move here. Someone's saying that this is apparently called a hook pattern, which I did not realize. So I'll have to do my research on that. I apologize. Not trying to appropriate any pattern names here. But yeah, I just to me, I kind of like the look. It kind of looks like an umbrella handle to me. But I'm going to have to look into that um, that pattern there as well. Yes, so we got our first little beak wetter here. And we're going to get the rest set. I like this area around that. 475, so let's see if we get here. I'm gonna go a little bit above 475, and we're gonna get the lesson going. So um, yeah, very exciting lesson, and we got a little PowerPoint now. That's our new our new thing to add some visual brightness to the proceedings here. There we go, the slideshow has begun. Uh, so this is really cool, and I love you know the idea that you could imagine that you're at a buffet when you're talking about spotting accumulation and distribution specifically for day trading, right? So if you see people piling plates really high with food, that could be a sign that the market is accumulating. People are accumulating food. People are getting ready to eat. Or are they leaving half-eaten uh, dishes scattered around as the food kind of calming down? People are eating less. Maybe people are getting a little bit full, so there's less food being added to the plate. That could be a sign of distribution, which is selling. And so in day trading, it's, it's the same idea, but instead of food, we're gonna talk about shares and we're gonna be watching price and volume and what are the stocks doing instead of what is the, you know, the food doing? So basically, candlestick clues. That's going to be one of the first things we look at. And I love this way of wording it. They're like little mini market stories that they unfold with each high, open, low, and close. And so what are some of the key clues we want to talk about? Uh, bullish accumulation. So we've got engulfing patterns, which is, you know, a long green candle completely engulfing a smaller red candle, showing that buyers are overwhelming sellers, and we've got move to run the prices even higher. Then we've got a hammer candle, which is just a hammer-shaped candlestick right at the support area. And this is going to maybe hint at buying interest, even though there is a dip. So these candles could basically indicate potential reversal. Uh, what about the doji with the long lower shadow? So this basically, you've got an equal low open and close for the doji, but then you've got a really long lower tail, which can indicate buying interest, overcoming selling pressure, despite the indecision reflected in the, the small body. Thank you for showing that. No problem. Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, we had some selling. Then we got this little doji showing, hey, the, the buyers are reloaded. We're ready to go back up. And that's indeed what ends up happening there. And it looked, color doesn't really matter for this, as long as you have that, that downtrend preceding it and the uptrend uh, proceeding it. So it's kind of baked in between there. Rising wedge. Also really a good one to note here. So this is when you've got prices moving upwards in a narrow channel, lower highs, higher lows. We're, we're kind of moving up and we're getting tighter as we move up. Bang. And this will suggest we've got accumulation before a big breakout. These usually tend to break out in whatever direction that the market is going. So rising wedge, rising wedge usually in an uptrend, going to break up. Uh, falling wedge usually down. Sorry, Derek, can down. I just make one quick yes. uh, addition here? With respect to the, the breakout of this pattern, once we get the break of the upper trend line, what we're looking for is above average volume. We have to look for above average volume there and an eventual break of that trend line. And you're looking for it to gap up, essentially, rather than actually make its way through there intraday. Okay. Just want to point that out. Thank you. And I think, can I, I, so that would be also because accumulation is when you have kind of lower volume going into it, right? So Dang. if you have the volume increasing, that would show we're breaking out of accumulation. There you go. Thank you so much. I appreciate that.
Um, also, let's talk about bearish distribution. So when the bears are kind of getting conked out, we've got some bearish movement going on. How can we tell that distribution is occurring? You're going to have an inverse engulfing candle. So that's when you've got a red candle completely engulfing a little tiny baby green candle, as you can see here. We had some uh, buyers, and then the bears come, and they say, no, you don't. And they overwhelm. Yeah, like the little, little snooty <laughs> finger Sharif was using there. Um, yeah, the, you use the, the old man finger wave there. And then you've got the bearish candle saying, like, nah, uh, uh we're going to be taken over for a while, please and thank you. Hey, Hanging Man is another interesting one here. Uh, this is the Formic Key Resistance with a little tiny body and the long upper shadow and a short lower shadow. So as you can see, we have the movement up and we gap up, which I think is a cool example of this. So there is still some buying pressure, but not enough to, to overcome the downtrend that is soon to follow. What I'd like here too is the downtrend doesn't have to be red candle after red candle after red candle. You could have some green candles baked in there too. It's just we're generally moving down. Doji with a long upper shadow. So that's going to be exactly the opposite of the other doji of which we spoke. This one you've got, uh, we're generally going to be maybe in an up, yeah, we're in an uptrend. Then we have a little doji, so we open it close, basically the same price. Then we have that long wick, buyers getting their last hurrah before the sellers say, um, we'll take it from here, please, and thank you. <laughs> and they run that market all the way down. Or all the way down, down as Sean often references, down. which I appreciate. So, Or down, as Sharif will say. <sighs> hey, Sean. Uh, yeah, everybody. Down. Down. <laughs> Falling wedge <laughs> is another one here, too. Another sign the market's going down. Uh, prices will trend downwards within a narrowing channel, and this will kind of suggest that we've got a little bit of distribution before a potential break now. Now, and thank you, Sharif, for pointing this out. This, much like the break up, break out, we're going to want a lot of volume because that shows, hey, that distribution we had petering along like a little turtle uh, is ready to break out. We've got, you know, this. the floor is going to come down from below us with strong volume. We've got those sellers definitely overwhelming the buyers. So I think that's a really cool example. And thank you for clarifying and, and pointing that part out earlier because it's something that I definitely need to remember and hopefully some other people can you and I both. over yeah. here as well. Uh, volume whispers is another cool <laughs> one as well. So this, I, and I like that it says volume whispers because the volume is whispering in accumulation and distribution. Exactly. As Sharif very astutely alluded to there, both in the, the whisper and in the, the fact that, you know, when we have the breakout or breakdown, we're gonna have more volume because it shows we're breaking out of those lower volume crawl times. So volume and price, that, that integration is really important, that relationship. Bang. So if you have increasing volume with rising prices, that's gonna show some accumulation because we're getting ready for that big volume breakout. We've got some bigger players entering the market and pushing the prices up, driving the volume higher. And this is kind of, I like the, this bidding war idea, right? Bang. As things get intense in your auction, people are lifting the paddles right, left, and center, getting more action, getting more heated, and then eventually that beautiful breakout to the upside. Decreasing volume and falling price is going to be the opposite. It's going to be bearish. It's going to be distribution. You've got sellers unloading their shares. Some people are panic selling maybe. Maybe it's a short squeeze situation. Who the heck knows? But people are dropping. You're getting a little bit nervous. And this decreasing uh, interest is reflecting in the lower volume. And it's like a, a buffet losing its allure as the plates get empty. Or another, <laughs> another analogy I'd like to put out there too with regards to the buffet is it could be as you're getting full, you don't want to eat anymore. So now you don't want to fill your plate anymore. Dang. So we're, the buffet is losing interest and all that interest we had earlier is becoming a volume whisper at the buffet table. <laughs> uh, sudden volume spikes. This is also um, pretty, pretty abrupt here compared to these whispers. This is when we're kind of moving and then all of a sudden we have a big move up with strong volume. And that can show you, hey, there might be stronger buying or selling pressure than we thought. And uh, so aggressive buying or aggressive selling, depending on what direction you're moving, is going to be suggested by those spikes. Is something going on? I just saw Yeah, that. solar is skyrocketing here. So Michael Noss was like bang on this morning, With guys. Pan. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not showing it on my chart, guys. Uh, so, But solar is flying on the day, guys. Everything is in high to mid single digits on my, on my watch list. So Michael Noss was mentioning solar today. Um, he was looking at the tan. Maybe you guys should have a look at solar to see what it's up to lately. But sorry to interrupt you, Adair. No, it's okay. I just yeah. saw that face and I was like, yeah. I, I think that this, yeah. This, it's just, we're skyrocketing. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. So people were mentioning that in the chat too. Yeah. Pomp it up. Um, also, John Sismanti is saying Taylor Swift won, I guess in reference to the Super Bowl. And I mean, that was my takeaway as well. I mean, <laughs> go Kelsey, go Mahomes. I know two football players, go me. But yeah, so I mean, but go Kansas City Chiefs.
good look there, but also a good look is volume comparisons. So one of the things you wanna do with these volume whispers is you wanna compare the volume you have today to the recent averages. And so um, if you have extra volume on this uptick, that can strengthen the idea, especially if you're gonna go longer term, that hey, this is actually probably pretty significant. This might be a big move. And that's something you really wanna pay attention to. What about um, comparing volume across different price levels? This is interesting, and I was talking to Sharif about this. One example could be, what if you look at what NVIDIA did at that 500 break to see, hey, like what kind of volume was it doing at that key price level? Maybe, you know, NVIDIA, I cannot believe I'm saying this, is nearing 750. Maybe we can watch it. That could be a key price level and say, hey, what kind of volume did we do when we broke these other key price levels, right? So that could kind of show you what volume do we expect from a, bre uh, a breakout. And as Sharif so astutely said, it could help you prevent a fake out breakout. Because if you've got lower volume on a breakout, maybe that's not a real breakout. Maybe that's just like a little fake out. It's just trying to trip you up there. So I think that's pretty key. I think that's something to note there for sure. Right. Um, especially if that's at key levels too, right? Because we're always looking for confluence. Shout out to uh, Mr. Obi. What about the context canvas, which is another great way of wording it. And get, don't trade in a vacuum. Don't have one thing in the buffet when you've got a whole lovely buffet to choose from. What are things you might wanna consider then? You wanna look at news and events. Are there some other upcoming catalysts that could attract buyers for accumulation? Or, and I was saying to Sharif, what about catalysts that could be negative? Yep. That could lead to a gap down, cough, cough, Boeing. Because that was the biggest one I could think of as a completely unforeseen. Absolutely. No one could predict that that would have occurred with Boeing or no one should have hopefully could have predicted that, right? So to me, I think that's a good example on the bearish side because I remember I was thinking, hey, is this only bullish? But no, it can happen in general. What about support and resistance? Do you have the price uh, approaching a key area of support, so a buying zone or resistance, which is a distribution opportunity. You could also use these levels for exiting your trade, which is something I do a lot. You know, like all, if I'm in a long, I'll get out when we get to that support uh, or when we get to that resistance, because you know that resistance can be a distribution opportunity. Exactly. So if I'm in a long, I'm gonna get out part of the position and maybe leave a piece for the dream when we get there. Same with support if I'm in a short. And I think, you know, I'm just trying to <laughs> contextualize that in this way. Um, oh, Neil. Of course, Neil, dropping hot lies mid-paragraph mid, uh, mid there in the chat. He's like, there's a lot of buffet talk. I mean, you can't just have all this buffet talk without, you know, a, a, a Ram Ram snack corner, <laughs> right? I mean, not, not all, all of us have uh, little snack corners here at a desk, Sadera, but Ram yeah. Ram's, uh, she's well, uh, well stocked up there. Uh, to be fair, I have, like, chicken from lunch, so I guess I've got a snack show, corner Show right everybody now. the food, This yeah. is, like, really, really good chicken. I was nibbling on this while Brian Coles was giving his speech. Shout okay. out to him. But, yeah, there's some chicken. It's some nice, like, smelling nice. little sauce here and some rice. Uh, um, it smells very good. It, it does smelled smell good for the last, like, an hour. Yeah, sorry, yeah, it's just been it's kind okay. of sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Sharif's like shouting, at, he's like, oh, excuse me. But yeah, so so good times there. Um, but yeah, a little, little food interruption there. So thank you, Neil, for that. Um, also, uh, Neil talking about Intel there as well. So if you're following Neil's Intel short, you can you can get the, the Intel on that short. Oh, wow, chat. that was made for you right there. That was made for you. Sean made an Intel yeah. on Intel joke a couple podcasts ago. Did and he? I was pretty happy. Uh, I was pretty pleased as punch. Well, you're rubbing off uh, probably on a lot of people around here, right? I, I, I can't help it. Like, well, even I, if I, they're I, not listening to the show, like, um, you know, on purpose, it's, it's registering yeah. in the background <laughs> the there. They're just kind yeah. of like osmoting their way in. Exactly. Um, also, market trend is a really key thing to think about as well, too. So are we in an uptrend, which is going to make accumulation more likely, a downtrend, which is going to lead to a bit more distribution, or is it going to be more range-bound? So, I mean, I like ranges, but they're certainly, they can make you a little bit scared because they can go either way. The markets don't care about your feelings. You can be like, oh, this thing is rangy and looks beautiful, as I sometimes do, and then the market's like, oh, um, excuse me? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just be, just be really cautious. But if you are uh, in these uptrends or downtrends, it's more likely we can accumulate or decelerate or distribute into this nice Bang. move up or down. Confirmation is king or confluence to shout out a pal of ours whose name you might know. Um, so you don't want to get ahead of yourself. You really want to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row before getting into a trade. Um, cough, cough, some of my NVIDIA trades earlier, right? You don't want to get in on a whim. You want to see the whole picture. So how can you help see the whole picture? Technical indicators. Bang. RSI, on balance volume, which is something I took some notes on, so I'm excited to chat about that nice. later this week probably, can help you get a sense of buying and selling pressure. And what about chart patterns? Um, you can really look for some other patterns. And some of these indicators we're talking about actually involve patterns. So the falling wedge pattern, rising wedge pattern, right? But it's like you want to look at all these little individual pieces and make a mosaic or the little bits of food that will make up a buffet. I'm so sorry, Neil. So that's kind of <laughs> to, to end the lesson there. I think that's a good note on which to end. Great but stuff. really, 
clearing it up with everything needs some confluence, um, as, as Obi does say. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for covering that. While you were talking, Adara, we did break above 18.1 again on the future, but we are at that level we've been at for the majority of the morning. Look at this level over here. This is not by accident that we're topping out at 18.110, 18.110. Okay, that we've been touching this level all morning. All right, uh, so essentially from 12 o'clock onwards, we've been rejecting that 18 one, uh, 18 110. Uh, we're we're near there again. We haven't been able to break through it. Kind of a random level at which to find resistance, but we did reclaim it awfully aggressively as we came back down into 18070, and this probably trapped a lot of bears. And I I don't mean to single out anybody in the chat. But a lot of people were looking south on that 18-1 giveaway that we had this morning, and then right back up we went. This market can, you know, is awfully indecisive sometimes, but the overall picture today does seem to be uh, to the high side. And I got to tell you, it's one of those days where the ES is outperforming the NQ, so is the Dow, and certainly the Russell. The Russell is up 2% today, guys. So IWM would have definitely been along on the day, but you know, that's not the one I really trade. It's the RTY that I keep my eye on. Let's pull up the RTY over here as it's been awfully strong on the day. Here it is. Amazing. This is what the Russell looks like. So the closing print on the Russ, yes, or not yesterday, Friday, was just a smidge above 2,000. We get into that 2,000, I think it was 18 or so. We have cleared 2,000 now. We're on our way. 2060.2 is the HOD on the RTY March contract. We are above all the previous resistance levels, so we put in that higher low, and we make that higher high, baby. Uh, so we troughed out here initially in mid-Jan, and then we dropped again here early Feb, and there we go, breaking through these, this January flat top at 2,000 by some distance. So great look today on the rust. Even the, the Dow is up two-thirds of a percent. Um, so ironically enough, the NQ is the laggard on the day um, as compared to the other three index names. But it is above 18.1, and so that's why we're still holding on to this last contract. We're looking for that decided 18.1 to one and a half break, if we get it. That's been the high day that we put in earlier on in the the beginning of the show around 11.30 or so, we haven't been able to break that level um, for the day. Chris J, Chris J saying, Russell bull trap today. You wouldn't be wrong, Chris. Even though, you know, I'm not typically, you know, uh, a big fan of these counter trend trades, I do have to agree with you because the rust has been quite bamboozling. It'll have an outsized day and then it'll give up the ghost a couple of days later or it'll do nothing for a little while. So you, your point is well taken, but you know what I would say is look for confirmation of a decided break of a, a key support level before you guess your way into that one because you know there is an end to every trend and this could be the beginning. Well, we heard a lot last year about um, you know the cycling of money into new into new areas, et cetera. So we'll we'll have we'll have uh, to keep an eye on that. All right, what else we got here, man? I mean, we can't just talk about the futures all day. What else we got? We got Apple recovering uh, from the the bottom it made today. We obviously have multiple small cap gappers on the day. The one I have here is MGIH. This bad boy is up 700%. It is accumulating here above seven bucks. Seven dollars was a bit of a uh, an area of resistance initially, but it was able to clear it, coming up to 780, then finding that seven level as that support level. Now it's doing the dance with eight. So let's see if this one is able to hold eight and make its way back up to nine. Initially, the, the closing prints were all south of nine, even though we did have a wick above that nine level into about nine and a half, all the closing prints here south of nine. So if we can get nine on a closing basis, that could signal a new potential level for MGIH again. To give you some information on this one, Millennium Group International, it's a 1.25 million share float, so one and a quarter million shares. That is awfully small, guys. And uh, we did look at the, um, the float on this bad boy, MGIH, the short float, that is, and it is negligible, according to Trade Idea, 0.02% of the float is shorted. So, you know, this is all momentum here. This is all buying momentum. Nobody's getting squeezed at these levels or no, not... Maybe they are getting squeezed because they're shorting right now, but not um, not historically a high short 
float, Adair. And there, down we go on the Fuge again. We are really having trouble breaking through this 18-1 area, and it's more specifically this 18-1-1-0. How many times are we going to reject this level? It's been one, two, three, four, five wicks off that level. Five independent uh, crests rejecting off 18-1-1-0. Maybe just get out of the position and start shorting 18-1-1-0, baby. It's been playing all day, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, there's been so so many different kind of avenues here. I did exit my meta trade, and I'm pleased as punch, I have to say. No sweater in meta. I mean, there was a little bit of sweater in meta, sorry, to be clear. <laughs> I got a little bit Nvidia nervous to be pancake. curled back up into my point of entry, but then I realized, A, lower low. B, we held this really well. So I said, you know what, Adara? I was talking to Sharif off camera about trying to get more comfortable reloading. To me, this was a good reload opportunity. We're right at the 9 EMA, which we kind of kept being short off of, and we were holding it. So I added a little bit, and I got out right at the bottom here, basically where I took out the first part of the position. Um, yeah, and I think, too, like I said, because part of me was like, oh, you'll get out of Dara, and there'll be more downside. I've been able to, I find, eradicate. I mean, I'm a human, so there's always going to be some FOMO, but I think I've been able to um, eradicate a, a decent amount of FOMO for my for my taste by just like having a plan going into it because then I'm like no matter what happens you know you executed the plan accordingly it could go lower but that wasn't part of your plan right and so my plan was to get out of the area of previous resistance um, ironically where I had these little um, longs earlier th th to be fair these longs weren't bad although I mean clearly I got out too early cough cough but I think <laughs> it was really th my thing with the longs I just kept fat fingering my way out of pieces of them but that's okay I like this short here and I think you know patience is key uh, Sharif is definitely a huge mentor for me in that regard with being patient, something I'm trying to learn from because you're so patient in that NQ trade. Eh? No, seriously. I mean, wow. Uh, like, because I would have like kept leaving that NQ trade if I was in it. But it's a, you know, and I think that's why I like to to go back to the whole prospect of planning. As I know you say, as long as the trade's still valid, you can stay in it, right? Yeah. I think that's what I'm trying to look at. And I mean, the trade was still valid, so so yeah. you were not going to leave. And I think I think that's a really good way of looking. Thank at you it. now, though, Dara. Nvidia is uh, single-handed. Well, I don't want to say that single-handedly, but it is. Definitely part of the responsibility of the futures of tanking. Look at this move down on NVIDIA, guys. We topped out at that 746. That was the topping tail candle that started this whole downturn. We initially had a nice bounce off VWAP, but that was it. That was the only bounce off VWAP you were going to get. And down we go. Uh, bottom wick right now is around 726 and two thirds. We're at 728 and a half right now. So not quite at the lows. That's not the lowest of the low though. This is the lowest of the low uh, on the day, 72140. And that takes you to, to Friday's close. So this level over here, not by accident. This 72, this candle over here that we made at 950, it was, it didn't bottom there for no reason. That was Friday's closing print. It holds that level to a T. So if you took that trade, let's see how much money you would have made on that trade. So you would have taken that trade for three and a half percentage point on a 700 plus dollar name if you had waited there on Friday's closing print, taking it to the top, obviously a lot easier said than done. So I don't mean, mean to make anybody feel bad for not having that trade. That's not the point at all. The point is to tell you that this 72140 didn't wasn't created in a vacuum. It was based upon Friday's close. And obviously the high here, we don't have anything higher than this, right? Not on NVIDIA. Let me just double check that real quick. Yeah, that was all-time high. So we made all-time highs this morning on NVDA. 74611 is the all-time high. So we have nothing to chart to the high side on NVIDIA. We're going to have to use something else uh, to look at, you know, when we're slowing down here on our descent or ascent. But... Right now, trying to hold up above 728. Let's have a look at what the futures are doing. No, they are not doing well. The futures are on its way down. So it looks like this NVIDIA sell-off has precipitated a larger market sell-off. We are tanking on the future now. Breaking down below key levels. The Katina man's back, and he's pleased. He just yelled out, good. What so, an entrance. What a return. <laughs> I know, right? Good. Yeah, it just happened to come in right at the right time, baby. Uh, down we go. We are going to break this uh, consolidation bottom that we had this morning at 18.060. What a move down on the umpteenth rejection of 18.110. So that gave you a nice, like, 60 points there if you were taking that bad boy short as we are headed down on the market. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm just trying to get out of this uh, the cyber truck here because Tesla careened to the downside. Um, and, yeah, it does not want to get a break to allow me to um, 
politely exit the vehicle. Okay. Um, but that's okay, that's fine. Um, also, yeah, I mean, like, what a, what an entry. Sean comes back in his coat, we're like, oh, the futures are tagging, and Sean's like, good. And I mean, what a welcome back. You're gonna see him and Neil in just 30 minutes. Time really does fly on it how to trade. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been quite a day. Yeah, basically, also, I wanna talk about the thesis for entering the Tesla law. Go for it. If I may. Um, so the thesis was uh, this, although in retrospect, the candles were probably telling me uh, a message, but I like that we were kind of riding this 9 EMA at the time really smoothly. We had that nice uh, nice little bottom there at 188. I was really just gonna try to take it into that 190 and then um, try to get all of it out by that really clear point of resistance, that 190, 65. It wasn't meant to be, that's okay. We, we really failed there. Um, I was really watching what we did kind of if we broke below that trend line, we decisively broke and I left here. Northwestern Canopy Development saying SMCI is a buy the dip stock if anyone noticed. I mean, I don't think that's incorrect at all. I think that's a, a very solid point and there's nothing super micro about the moves the stock has been making as of oh, late. No. Although this, this is interesting. We're up, yeah, we're up like six, we're up 6% in the day, oh my God. We're, this was a really nice clean move off the 9 EMA earlier. Then we fall with the viciousness, but we're holding VWAP <laughs> like a glove. Vicious. We're we holding are. VWAP like a glove, I do have to say. Although this wedge, instead of getting narrower, is getting wider, which is kind of interesting. Um, right, so instead of having that move where we kind of taper in, we're kind of tapering out. Right. But we're still holding VWAP. So interesting, look here. I want to look at the daily on SMCI, which I know will just have my, me, um, Open mouthed in shock. Salivating. Yeah. There we go. Salivating. Um, shock and awe. What, Market's what tanking, guys. Market's oh my tanking, How, guys. Oh no. Yeah, we we are tanking here on the market. Shout out to the Katina man who's still holding that arm short. Adair, we are on the way down on the NQ here. Say it again, Katina man. The Katina man is now done with the arm short. Short Amazon 173.50. The Katina man's holding that bad boy, but he's out of the arm trade. Sorry to interrupt you, Adara. No worries, I just put in the chat, Sean disarmed the market, because uh, he has gotten out of arm, um, was very happy to be, the market was short when he arrived, so that was a good time. Um, I have a question for you. Please do, yeah. So we're, we talk about inflation a lot on the show, right? And I don't know how you feel, but in Canada, we've had a lot of food inflation, right? And you know, Someone who eats a lot of protein, I can I can vouch for that yeah. personally. But um, I don't think we've had this kind of food inflation. You ready for this, Adara? No. All right. But yes. So the Big Mac meal, the Big Mac meal okay. at McDonald's, obviously. Um, how much do you think it's selling for in a, in a McDonald's at Darien, Connecticut? Now, mind you, this is not California or anything like that, right? It's Connecticut. Let me let me think about this. Okay, so I don't I don't. No, I think like usually the McDonald's meals in Canada are about 12-ish dollars. I don't go to McDonald's very often. Okay. So in the U.S., let's say they were 10-ish dollars. So let's say now they're, I'm going to go 12 50 before tax. I'm going to have to tell you to go a little higher. 14? I'm going to have to tell you to go higher again. 16. I'm going to have to tell you to keep going. 1895. $18. $18 for a Big Mac, some fries, and a watered-down drink in a location <laughs> at Darien, Connecticut. Yes, and this was re reported by uh, a driver who drove through there named Eric Gonzalez, posting that actually online with proof of how much it costs. Go Eight Eric Gonzalez for doing the Eight world a service there. Yeah, oh $18 for Big Mac meal, Adara. That is, that is crazy. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, Tan <laughs> wins saying 15 in Boston. <laughs> Fifteen? Yeah, yeah. Thirty dollars in Switzerland says squash battles. That can't be real. Are you for real? What is it considered imported food over there? What the hell's going on in also, Switzerland, Ravine's man? Getting a little bit upset at you in the chat. <laughs> Don't hate on McDonald's <laughs> Coke. I'm assuming Look, that's Ramin. That could be Fabian, but I think it's. Uh, I, it is Ram Rib. It is, Fabian's on the on the ladder. Oh my god! I'm yeah, yeah. Fine. The Chilean yeah, nightmare is uh, doing uh, hard work work today. Uh, oh, no. there they both are. <laughs> you, you can see him a little bit on the left there. That is him on the ladder. We don't want to jinx him. He's busy. But yeah, $18 a day. And I don't know if that includes their state tax. Uh, I don't know if they have state tax on food. Uh, I know we don't have HST on food. But we have it on fast food, but not at... Uh, not at the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, if it's like a necessity, right. I know, yeah, like like I buy like a lot of fruit, Ugh. like I'll just buy like a, a ton of like raspberries or whatever, and those are tax free, which is very nice for, for me. So Yacha saying $9.69 in Wisco. 
I don't know where that is. I was thinking where? Waco, Texas there for, but that's not. Yeah, I just don't get it, man. That, that's madness over there. I just wanted to point that out, show it up on my feed. But while I was telling you about that, let me tell you about this. The Fuge absolutely tanked, guys. And it is, I, I, I don't want to say just tank, but it is tanking. It is in the process of tanking. We did come into that level that we closed out overnight at. This was the closing print. And look where we're bouncing off, 18039. That is the overnight close. We're right back at that level. Forget about VWAP. We gave up the ghost on that. So now this is the level here that we're gonna keep our eye on. Do we find support at this level or is it gonna be an 18,000 touch that we gotta get here to kind of uh, get any sort of breaks on this market descent? But I'm keeping my eye on this white line here on my chart. You know how I always chart the closing print? We're finding support there right now, but who knows how long for. Oh, you know what thing we didn't do? We didn't do our housekeeping today. There are so, so many names we're running and we had a longer lesson than we typically do with this accumulation and distribution. So let's have a look here at uh, the, the economic calendar. So we had Fed Bowman speaking at 920. That was fine. We had two auctions today, the three month and the six month, both of which are not covered uh, aggressively or uh, you know looked at a lot by market participants. We also had Barkin speaking at 12. We had Kashkari speaking at one. Kashkari has been a bit more bullish I'd say lately than some of the other Fed um, Feds. And then we don't have anything else except the Fed budget balance that comes in at two and we don't typically cover that. So no auctions to precipitate this market down, but probably Fed speak. I don't know if it was Cash Curry. Let's have a look here at the news blotter. See what uh, the Neil, that's another Neil, by the way. Yeah, the two uh, Neils. <laughs> yeah, because it's Neil Cash Curry, right? Yeah, but he spells it with two E's. Yeah, he does, N-E-E-L. Cash Curry. Nothing coming up on my news blotter with Cash Curry. Let's see if anything on the Neil, no. Nothing coming up on my blotter, so nothing reported yet from the Fed. We'll see if we get anything and then we can relay it back to you guys. I'm not even seeing anything Fed. New York Fed accepts, what is this? No, that's not it. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on these markets and on the future specifically as we really do try to hold that overnight close, Adara, at that 18.039 level. Yeah, also I like that you've now taken Neil's nickname and given it to another Neil. That's great, now there's the <laughs> Neil. You know what um, he said to me one time? He's like, I'm a dang person. Yeah. Stop referring to me as like an inanimate object. I'm a proper noun, damn it. That's pretty <laughs> funny. But also, I guess, because I get what he means too, because the Katina man is clearly a, a person, right? The yeah. The Katina man. Yeah. And so that's interesting. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting argument. Also, um, I'm, I just want to talk about my Tesla short for two seconds. We hopped to the Cybertruck to the downside, <laughs> um, and I'm just all smiles right now. We'll see if those smiles continue. Taking out a piece for the dream at this earlier area of resistance. Shout out to, of course, Sharif, um, hey. the professor, at, with a piece for the dream. We'll see if we get here. Like I said, earlier areas of resistance, sorry, support, earlier support, I'm getting out here. I'm, I like the idea of the bottom of this camp. So we're just going to step in here because we had uh, some mic issues that they are working on. But uh, we just got VWAP on it. 
Randy, like, Randy hasn't showed up. Uh, well, he got us a coffee this morning. Know, but, like, the second, okay, we're going to come on, and there were some mic Sorry. issues, and then Randy pops in there. I was going to talk about something else. But um, how was your weekend? Short. His weekend was too short. I have no idea if they can hear you. Like, does that mic work? You, you had a day off, bro. Short. Come on, okay? <laughs> short. short. I know. Weather was good, though. It was gorgeous, oh, wasn't it? No, I'm good yeah, to go. Gorgeous I can go. What did you do outdoors? Washed my car by hand. And then apparently there were audio. Yeah, was... Gotta yeah. wash. That's, there's, some, there's, something, there's something to be said about a good, a nice day, wash your car, therapeutic. have a beer after. Yeah, yeah I, I used to do that all Sorry, the time. Mark, they were telling there was huge issues. They were like, no, okay. <laughs> now everything is apparently good. Are we buying Tesla yet? Why can't you just give me the answer that I want to hear instead of trying to be honest with me? Hang in there. Such strong opinions. I know. <laughs> Easy now. We're trying here. We're trying to match it. We can go back. Okay, apparently everything's working. Go market to the downside. I don't have my money. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. I just went to use the uh, the wa the bathroom. I keep wanting to say washroom, but I know Americans are gonna be like, "What's washroom?" I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, my my mic is obviously good to go. Adira's mic dies early because she uses that at the big desk. So typically, we change the battery a little bit before there. All That's good. My bad. Sorry Adira, that, we guys. are on the way down. Though goodness gracious, what a move down on the future today. We are on our way to eighteen thousand. The Katina man is yelling about Amazon because he's printing on there. We have an 18,003 low, and that was made overnight, Adair. We have the IB low is even above that. So we are really on our way down. Let's watch how we do at 18,000 here. It'll be a 121 point range plus if we can break that level. But yeah, what a move down for the Bears. Shout out to Big Caliber Dad. He's pumped. He took that bad boy south. Look, I didn't think we were going to tank like this because, you know, we had cleared 18,100 uh, 18, uh, for a while. And down we go again, Adair. Here we go. Now we have a new low of day, 18,075. Do we hold that 18,000 level? Pack your patience, because if we do, it's going to be a nice move up. But what doesn't look like we are, we are headed down. Softies tanking, Meta's tanking, Tesla's tanking. There goes NVIDIA. NVIDIA's red on the day now, down a third of a percent. We were up big. Say, say it again. You're yelling at me or yelling at Patty Ice? Patty Ice. Patty Ice is back there, baby, and he's pumped. Adara's clapping. Everybody's in a position except me. What's going on over there, Adara? Oh, I clapped because I, I left the Cybertruck. But yeah, this okay. is, um, I think this is, you know, I've been talking about trying to be more adaptable. I was even saying that to Bears versus Bulls regarding my, um, my mic snafu, which was my fault, and I do apologize for that. But this is what I'm saying is we tried to go short Tesla earlier. The timing on this was not fortuitous, to say the least. It would have been fine had I done as Neil says and wait for the back end. So that's what I learned from that. Then we tried the long. The long didn't work, didn't get too much damage here. But this last short, I'm really excited to talk about. Go for it. So I got in here. As I said, I like that we had this area of um, slight accumulation earlier, then a little dip, <laughs> and then a nice pop at that 189. We get back there, and I, I got to short top wick, which I was pretty pleased to punch about here. Not top wick. Mind you, top wick could have been while I was still in the long, mm. but where we had that little bit of pullback to the upside, right? And then I was like, you know what? This might not hold. And if it does hold, we're going to get out basically around this, this EMA, right? Around where I was in the long. But we did end up working. We fell to the downside. I took out part of it around this earlier area of su support. And then I took out the rest right below that 188. We got out 187.99. That was where I clapped loudly. I do apologize for that. Why? And then we were caught. Oh, I appreciate Yeah, we all yeah. celebrate here. That's yeah. loud. So, so, yeah, what a look there. <laughs> hey, look who's celebrating over here. The Katina man is printed. He's in Team oh, Obi yeah. with Amazon there, there over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hit everybody. it, Katina, man. Everybody's um, celebrating there. Thank you so much to Neil. Timing of short was good. Even Dollar Stop Tricky to use there. Thank you so much. I, re I really appreciate that. And I, I appreciate trying to learn every day. Yeah, this nice. was, I will admit, I was really scared getting my exit there. And I think that's, you know what Neil said. It's really hard to, especially kind of getting the, the bottom wick. Like, I, I think to me, this is too lucky for me to be completely proud of it. I probably should have tried to get it right above that 188 because luck is, you know, not always a sign that you did well. Luck's a sign that the market had your back a little bit. Yes. And maybe it shouldn't have. But you know what? I'm not going to, right now, I'm just going to learn from that, that, issue there with the exit and I'm going to be pretty proud of how this went because given some of those questionable NVIDIA trades earlier I don't want to say started at the bottom and we're here because we're not at the top but started at
at the bottom and now we're somewhere. And my chart's also somewhere. I don't know where my chart went. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> shout out to Drake. What the hell happened there? <laughs> Let's refresh of, also, it. Yeah. Trade without candles, yeah, I know. Come on. Uh, Derek, can't you trade without seeing the price action? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see. We, we're also NVIDIA is at 720. That's insane. But yeah, no, I mean, also look at how 80s this looks with all these little triangles. It looks like the do the right thing, like logo there. Do and the I right mean, thing. also, why was I in this name so much today? Congrats. There he goes. To Sean. There he goes, what a baby. What a, um, I want to mention Monday. a couple things here, Derek, is that we got a re big rejection on the future. But you know where we didn't tank? Bitcoin. It's still holding up, guys. Come to my chart if you're able to, Ram Ram. Um, we're still holding up above these levels. Uh, pardon all these wicks here. I don't know what's going on with the wicks, but we're still above 14.9. We're sorry, 49,000. We're at 49.8, so we really haven't given up the ghost here on Bitcoin. In fact, we haven't even put a lower low. The lower low is at that 49.5, right? That's where the trough out it is before that eventual break of 50 and that move into 53.41. So we're still putting higher lows. The move on Bitcoin is not done, at least intraday. Let's see if we can get back above 50 here on BTC. It's not giving up the ghost. It's still up three and a, three and a quarter percentage points on the day. Shout out to all my uh, crypto heads out there that are probably pleased as dang punch <laughs> that we are moving up on these bad boys. And yeah, Mr. Longshore is bringing up that point as well. The uh, Russell is also up one and a... Uh, Three quarter percent. It's off the highs though, Mr. Longshorts, but definitely still not going red on the day like we are here on the NQ. I'm watching this 18,000 level. We, we're wicking above right now. 18,000, four now, underline, four now. We haven't given up the ghosts at these levels. I want to see what kind of candles we get at 18,000. Are we going to get these hammer candles, possibly showing some bullish uh, retracement signals? Or if we're going to give up the ghosts on 18, I'll take this bad boy short. I, I really don't care. We'll look at the we'll look at the levels below that to see where we can profit. But I want to see before I start looking short. I want to see us give up the ghost absolutely at eighteen thousand. So far, we really haven't yet. We're wicking with it a little bit above it, a little bit below it at the moment. We'll definitely look to see what we can get there. But yeah, all the Meg Seven names now, for the exception of Meta. And almost NVIDIA. NVIDIA just went red, are red on the day. I'm talking about these bad boys over here, the MAG7. Only NVIDIA, marginally green at the moment, uh, holding above that 720. And then Meta, which is above that 468 level, it's still green on the day at 472. Everything else, though, in MAG7 world, red on the day with uh, Tesla being the worst of the bunch, taking everything south here, two and two-thirds percent here on TSLA. But Tesla continuing to hold above, uh, sorry, support level two on pivots. A bit of a double bottom coming here, possibly here too, on TSLA at that 188. We'll have to see if this bad boy can continue to head uh, north. I'm actually going to look to get long Tesla at these levels. I'm going to send it to you, Adara, because I want to look at this chart a little bit further and set up some orders. Yeah, absolutely. I actually think that that definitely seems like a nice place to get long test because that's why I got out of that short where it was because we ended up getting wicked into that and then we ran up. So nice look there. Best of luck to you as you enter Thank the you. cyber truck. <laughs> cyber luck. Uh, yeah, no, I think a nice look there. Also, shout out to Odyssey Fights. Uh, I really like that name. Mentioning DraftKings to me. And I do, I like the look of this. I don't have a clear entry. I think I might be a bit late to this move, but I like this rounded bottom. I think you know, I tried to get involved in this. I was really late to, you know, to the party there. I would have wanted to get involved at 43. By the time I pulled this up, a little bit too late. But shout out to you, um, Odyssey Fights, because this is a really nice look on DraftKings, let me tell you. Sean and I were talking about DraftKings off camera this morning in the coffee room. Ah. So, um, yeah, talking about how this one could have been a nice wild card today. Yeah, that was the, the, the light, little light-up face that, <laughs> like that we were making there. But, yeah, um, because Bang. I was saying, you know, it had a price target increase from kind of core genuity. We also had uh, that news vis-a-vis -vis, uh, DraftKings and um, Barstool Sports and Dave Portnoy having that collaboration. So I think that's a, a nice look here. Basically, what we did here is we dipped below VWAP. We had a bit of a break below VWAP. We have a nice resurgence, a nice recovery, positive catalyst. Earnings coming up for this guy, too. So not a bad look at all here. Um, also, shout out to Guilty Gunner. I really like that name as well. 199 Super Chat BTC will be the global one world currency prophecy. Um, yeah, let me pull up BTC on trading view here. Um, 
because that has been quite a look. And I will say, I feel like I've learned a lot about just kind of trying to read the crypto charts through doing the, the crypto update, which is only once a day uh, and something I'm trying to look at more. But I think it certainly gives you a sense of how wildly this can move. It'll get stuck in ranges for a good long while. And then it'll say, hey, you know what? Time to run. Time for my day in the sun. Shout out to Patrick in Mara and all of the everybody in Mara, everybody in Coinbase. Earnings coming up Friday after close. But yeah, I mean, look what look at this here on on. Bitcoin. We had support becoming resistance here at this 40, just shy of 42. Uh, again, a little bit higher, right? So 43, but certainly kind of around the same area. We dip lower, starts to get a little bit dicey. And then we have this nice recovery coming back again into that earlier area of support resistance, that 42, 43 area, shooting up with a vengeance for eighth day in a row. Above 50,000, fantastic look. Thank you so much for your super chat there, Guilty Gunner. Fifth super chat on a live stream. And certainly... Eight days to the upside for your BTC there. Um, nothing, nothing itty bitty about that Bitcoin move. Um, so nice, <laughs> nice look on Bitcoin there. Um, yeah, what, what a day, what a market. I don't think anyone could have predicted this. Also, nice Tesla look. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We don't know quite yet if this is going to be a punch in the face or a, a nice catch here off a possible double bottom off the double touch on support level two on pivots. Already setting up profit takers here at... Um, take advantage of the move up if we continue. What's up, Katina Man? The Katina Man is short 724 on NVDA, taking that bad boy short. Keep in mind, Katina Man is often putting his positions in the chat, so if you're following along with the Katina Man, keep your eye on the chat. And he's already printing, baby. Spin that, Katina Man. Uh, well, he wants to do the water. <laughs> Shout out to Hydration Nation there uh, in the chat and all the people following along with the Katina Man's trades. I'm keeping my eye on this TSLA trade. The break of 188 is the end of the trade for me here on TSLA. That is gonna be our line in the sand. But if we continue to pump up, we're putting in our profit takers looking to de-risk the majority of the position in front of VWAP, which is right now at 191 and a third. But before we get to VWAP, there are other resistance levels that we need to concern ourselves with, and mainly it's that 190 area. Look at that initial pop-up off that 188 area. We rejected at 190, so the whole dollar did play a part in this Tesla trade, and so we're, we're gonna have to look at 190 again if we are gonna start looking at higher resistance levels at 191 to third, that is where VWAP is. So clearly, de-risking here in front of 190 will de-risk in front of 191 to third or wherever VWAP happens to be at the time we're there. But the end of the trade is gonna be the break of 188 here on TSLA. That is the plan and I'm sticking to it, baby. So let's see what we get here on Tesla. But the future did hold up momentarily, at least here at 18,000, uh, Adara, as we did get wicks south of 18,000, but the closing prints all north of that 18,000 level, 18,005. And I'm not saying we're printing higher highs or anything, but for the moment, we don't look like we're gonna give up 18,000 just yet. We could, we absolutely could. And so we'll keep an eye on the future um, as we continue to go in the afternoon. There we go, we just got our first profit taker in front of 189 here on TSLA. So let's see if we can make it up now to the quarter dollar, that 189 and a quarter, that's what we'll be looking at. The, the out remains the same, whether or not we wet our beak into 189, it is gonna be the break of 188. That is the line the same here on TSLA. We'll see how it does. Yeah, congrats to you on there. On that little club, Woo. says Aaron Scrib. Yes, yes, come on. I know he's trolling me, but I'm just going to do this for you, baby. Please do. I'm, I'm in the 10 cent club, too, actually, on Spy. So we're going to, well, I'm in the, the paper 10 cent club. So we're going to be in the 10 cent club together. I like it, I we, like we it. We like to celebrate here. You Why know? not? That's what, it, what I love about how to trade is the mood is always jovial. Absolutely. And we're learning something, and we're... <laughs> We're laughing, and uh, you really enjoy the ten cent club thing. I did because it's funny. It's on it a one hundred and ninety dollar really name. Like, Aaron Scrib saying, "Let's yeah. go, love the profit club." So Aaron Scrib is down, yeah, and baby. we we love the support. We love to, to you know be here with everybody. Whatever. The, yeah. I want to talk about the spy long. Go for too, it. Both Sharif and I and, and Long's approaching VWAP. I think oddly enough, we're not in at all similar stocks, but I think our theses are somewhat similar because I'm getting out of this before VWAP. I'm trying to get right. out of this. We're scalpulating. We're watching the book here, trying to get out of this before that five hundred two twenty. Why did I get long? Because I, I watched and I was looking for some accumulation. Ooh. Although I guess we were in a downtrend, so kind of more of a reversal. But I was waiting for, I watched this candle and I was like, hey, we kind of, 
the, the selling kind of slowed down, huh? Uh -huh. Man. Might get back in, so that, or not back in. I've not been in this yet today. But I like this, but I'm going to be cognizant of VWAP because that could be where some, some switch ups happen, especially because look what we see around VWAP. Some, a little bit of chop and turn earlier on our big steady climb to the high side. So I do want to be cognizant. Uh, but I like, I do like the look of this uh, trade. We're going to have to see how it goes. Um, also, thank you so much to Chet GPT, fantastic name, by the way, uh, with $1 super chat. First super chat in the live stream saying, um, Bang. love you guys. So yeah, thank you so we much for you the right support. Back, we, we, love, yeah. Yeah, we love everybody in the chat. And we, like, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you everyone for being here. And I'm um, hopefully learning a little something, mm. uh, making some, <laughs> some puns. Uh, the gate, gatekeeper saying the short buffet is out of ham. Yeah, it looks like the shorts might be getting a little bit uh, maybe a little low on protein, I guess, there. <laughs> I love that analogy. Um, I want to talk about what we're going to talk about tomorrow. So today we talked about identifying accumulation and distribution patterns. Tomorrow we're going to keep it on the accumulation and distribution topic, but we're going to talk about understanding market context. So make sure to check that with Adair and I tomorrow. Understanding market context, super important. Give you a little sneak peek as to what this uh, encompasses. So you're looking, you're recognizing the impact of the news, the earnings reports, the economic data on accumulation and distribution. So we're remaining with that theme. Looking to identifying support resistance levels to gauge the potential in buying, bu buying and selling zones. Hit it, Katina, man. $3 in the money on that NVIDIA short. Shout out to the Katina man. And the last topic we'll be talking about with respect to understanding market context in an accumulation distribution phase is considering the overall market trend, whether we're in uptrend, downtrend, or consolidation uh, when interpreting price action. So make sure to check us out tomorrow as we continue to talk about that topic all week. Yeah, no, I think that certainly uh, really key. I was getting into the spirit on my Instagram, Trader TV, Adara Thanks. today. Took a photo of some of the cups at my desk, and I was like, look at the accumulation happening with these cups, you know, ahead of our accumulation distribution <laughs> day. So there will be puns on the Instagram as well, basically. Obviously. World, that but yeah, no, I think, you know, honestly, really excited to get into this lesson. And we're we're talking about this today as, off camera as well. We're really yeah. just happy to have the opportunity to Thanks. bring these lessons every day. Thank you to J John Szymanski. I learned something every day. Thanks, guys. Thank Thank you, and thank you guys for being here. And you know, you and I are always trying to improve the way we deliver it. We're trying PowerPoints today. We'll be trying some other stuff later. If you guys have suggestions as to how you want us to deliver the content, please put it in the chat. Tag Adara and I, tag Ram Ram at Live TV, tag the other individuals as well. If you guys, <laughs> she's like, why are you including me? Cause maybe I don't see it, maybe you see it, right? So tag us, let us know how we're doing, if you have any suggestions, not just about the topics, guys, but how we deliver it to you. We try to include some diagrams, some PowerPoints so you can see what we're talking about and not just have to listen to our voice. And you can go back and have a look at what that was like. Uh, but yeah, we're always uh, looking to please and looking to improve. Yeah, and we, I mean, you know, we, we've got some analogies for you today as well. There's, if there's aspects you like, if there's aspects, you know, and if, again, if there's any ideas that you want that even we can find in the wild, because that's the thing too, is we're really trying to come up with, with topics. We had this conversation last week mm -hmm. um, off camera about topics that we could actually show in the wild. Because I was thinking about potential for a crypto lesson sometime, but it's hard really to know when crypto is going to move. Right. So, you know, there's certain things where it's like a little bit more unpredictable, but if there's anything specifically, you know, we, and that was a really good idea of Sharif to have like the earnings week last week when we had all these major earnings. Exactly. Right? So we're really trying to make everything topical, uh, making sure everything is is really on point. And so, yeah, we, we really welcome suggestions. We really value this community. And so we really want to make sure, because we're I'm learning a little bit every day and I, we're really happy if everybody- makes two of us. Thank you so, yeah, I'm yeah. really happy to be here. And I think, um, yeah, this, this community is great. And we're, we're always happy to, to be a part of it and give a little bit. And there we are on our little banner. So with the, with the Apple there. The Opland group, loving this how to trade format and the fact that you guys repeat this for the folks who are late to the party. No, we thank you for that. And I was kind of worried, you know, that we would be repetitive to some people. We try to keep it short so that when we do repeat it, we don't annoy the hell out of you guys. But we really have to keep in mind that we have people joining and leaving all the time. So that's why we have that whole repeat process. I hope you can bear with us on that. And I hope maybe that you're uh, absorbing things the second, third time around that maybe you didn't hear or maybe you didn't absorb the first time around. I was hoping that that would be the case as well. And I see the people in there in the chat saying you guys should trade more. We do, we try, right? Number one, the midday is a little bit slower for trades. That's number one. Number two, we got to focus on the teaching aspect as well. So we're definitely being some trades and we do try to keep the... Uh, 
the educational aspect uh, around five to 10 minutes so that we could spend 55 to 50 minutes trading per hour. And uh, yeah, de definitely welcome all your inputs there. And that's as much as I can say there. Thanks. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, we, we, we're just kind of, we're just kind of going off here because we're, you know, we're, it's a Monday. It's a, it's a, it's a good time for a Monday. Thank you so much, Aaron Scribb. Love you guys. Thank, thank you, Aaron Scribb, for starting the 10 Cent Club, uh, which we, you know, we were both members of at the same yeah. time there earlier today. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, yeah, thank you so much for everybody. Eclectic Passions, great name. Shouting out Live Love Sale. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Also, some people mentioning AMD. So I will pull up some AMD because uh, we said, you know, we're, we want to give the people what they want. Right now, the people want Bang. AMD. Shout out to, of course, my pal Sharif here. Um, A to the M <laughs> to the D. And, um, oh, hello, AMD. This is interesting. This is really interesting. Um, I got, I made the ex my excited sound. We had this move up here. <laughs> Uh, we were b dancing around the 9 EMA, then we fell with the viciousness, and now we're coming into that area that we were right after open, where we saw some support. I think this could be a real area of support, but you know where I'm going to be watching out for resistance uh, with the, the old man finger waving here, the grandpa finger. I'm going to be watching right around that one just shy of 175, because that was where we had that support earlier. Then we had that big spike of resistance right at open, 175.26. And every time we have oh, support and resistance oh. on the way up, that's what I'm going to be watching Bang. back down. Kyle Burdett here big with the 199 super. Kyle yeah. Burdett, you know I like Ooh. to yell that a lot. Yes, you do. I don't know why. It's just because uh, even Neil asked me, he's like, why do you call him Big Kyle Burdett? Because he's a big guy. If you don't listen all the time, no soup for you. Look, you can take a time off and just, you know, trade. We get that. That's why we repeat. We hope you, uh, you know, bear with us. And thank you for all the really kind comments you guys put there in the chat. We do appreciate you guys always, as usual, Adara. Um, now let me tell you about this uh, Tesla trade that I'm in before we go off the air here. We are getting that 18,000 bounce, no doubt about it, on the future. But you're not really seeing that here on Tesla. And whoever put uh, in the chat, Tesla looks awfully weak. I have to agree with you here, and I'm break even on it at the moment. But it really is having trouble breaking through 189. In case you're wondering why I got into TSLA here, it looked like an awfully good double bottom off resist or support level two on pivots. And so we initially touched it over here, and we had a second attempt at it. And I'm like, okay, maybe we can make our way up into 190, especially if we hold 18,000 here on the future. That may not be the case. My line in the sand on TSLA is going to be that 180 level and not a cent lower, Adara. But I am looking for a possible 190 move, looking less and less likely right now on Tesla as it does show its weakness and probably for good reason on the day. As there were several new hit pieces on our friend Elon over the weekend, uh, we did touch, uh, touch on those a little bit earlier. He is being subpoenaed to testify with, uh, with the SEC about his acquisition of X. He had tried to you know, fight that before. It looks as if the judge sided with the SEC. Also, he's being accused of providing the Russians with uh, access to Starlink. And whether he, he's denied that, whether or not, you know, that's... Uh, We'll find out what happened. It is a negative catalyst for him in the news. Very much a negative catalyst there. Yes, yeah, certainly. Always something of interest going on with um, Elon. Always. Bit of an Elon weekend for him. But, uh, <laughs> you know, for now, best of luck in the Cybertruck to you, Sharif, with that Tesla long. Um, we will. We shall see what we shall see. Also, I did get out of the spy long. I took it out like 15 pennies. We kind of saw some. I was looking at the scalpulation. We were struggling. But it is 2 p.m. now. So we're going to have to say sayonara. Thank you so much to everybody in the chat. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Brendo is at the big desk. Hey, afternoon here as we uh, get going uh, into the final couple hours. I was just having a look at a bit of a choppy market as far as um, yields are concerned.